Hello. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. It is Tuesday night for me. I don't know what it is for you, but good evening, good morning, wherever you are. How's everybody doing? It's 4.2. It's out. I'm so excited. Hello, Star. Welcome to the chat. Oh, God. Shut up. Sorry, my phone started talking. How's everybody doing? Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Yeah, so instead of doing, you know, the stream of the Archon Quest during the weekend, we're doing it right now because I cannot wait. I'm too excited. We have to figure out what's going on. It is the last Archon Quest for the main story of Fontaine. So we got to play it now. What's up, Soleil? Welcome to the chat. How's everybody doing? I don't expect too many people to be here. Oh, uh-oh. I got a prompt for a world quest. So, uh, yeah, I don't expect too many people to be here because, well, people are probably what? playing the patch. Venti, shut up. We hear this every week. But we're still going to play it nonetheless, and I'm excited. Am I going to pull for Farina? We can do some pulls right now. Um, but as you can see, I I ain't got no primos. <laughs> so like I've been out of town for like a week and I did not play Genshin at all while I was gone. So I did not get to farm any primo gems really. I even missed the free primo gems for the stream, for the live stream. So yeah, I'm like, I'm very, very broke. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rinnies. How you doing? It's 5.30 and you're going to work soon. All right. Well, hopefully, Time to go. hopefully the stream will be a little bit relaxing while you get ready for work. Oh, you're, you're busy too, Star? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I did not have time to play. Okay. Yeah. I do want to pull for um, Farina, actually. So, before we actually do that, where should we pull for her? Like, where where should we pull for her? Or does it matter? Let's play as her first. Like, what is she? Is she like a healer or something? Is she an attacker? Oh, she's kind of like Xing Cho. Or Yelan. Ooh, I like that. I like her burst. The stream will keep you entertained while you get ready. Cool. Place where we first saw her, so the entrance of Fontaine. I like that idea. We'll go over there in a second. She's a healer and sub DPS. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I like how the screen is like different. You see all the bubbles and shit? That's pretty kooky. I'm only doing this so we can get the primos from it, by the way. We're not gonna do all the trials. Ooh, maybe we should do Charlotte's. Actually, I take that back. Maybe we should do Charlotte's because I do want to play as her. Wait, is she even out yet? Or is she being released in the second batch? No, she should be out. Yeah, she is. All right, we're gonna play as her. Okay. He's a cryo unit. Oh my God, her little camera thing helps her. That's adorable. Oh. How do I play as her? Okay. I actually like this. I think it's cool. All 
right. Ooh, maybe I should build Fremine. He seems pretty cool, huh? Alright, and one more. Okay, well, that was fun. Alright, so we're gonna go to the place we first met Farina, and then we're gonna pull for her. Then we're gonna start the Archon Quest, because, yeah. Oh, I still need to turn in my daily commissions that I did earlier. Ooh, look, the new area, pretty. All right, wish me luck, because I don't have any freaking primos, like, at all. This is not where we met her. We met her down below, right? Time to go. So we're gonna jump off of this, and then... All right. This is where we met her. Here we go, y'all. Uh, what? What? Oh. <laughs> oh. Pain, thy name is Onion. Oh my God, that was... Wow. F's in the chat, please. Just F's in the chat. Hello, Alshu, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Hello, Huang. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but hello. Well, that's unfortunate. We're gonna do one more pull, because that's all I have. Well, damn. That's okay. I'm eventually gonna get her though before this patch ends, so no worries. Hello, Juju, how you doing? Uh, that was. That was pain. That was painful. But at least we have the Archon Quest. So let's do that. Oh wait, wait. We have more primos. <gasps> they gave us... How many? 360? Well, that's not enough to do another poll. Hello, Mao. how you doing? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Rennies. We'll be getting a ton of primos via exploration and then um, the events, so. No need to fear, she will be here for me, eventually. All right, we can do one more pull, we can do one more pull. And of course it's not a five star, but that's okay. Oh, another Kale. I do want Charlotte though, so hopefully I can get her too. This scenery is but anyway. Surely enough to convince anyone. Now for the main event, what we're really here for. We are here to play the Archon Quest. Hopefully everybody's got their snacks. Hello Helix, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. No, no money spending, Soleil. No money spending. We do not spend money in this game. We're poor free-to-play players. <laughs> and that's how we're gonna play it. Okay, wait, before we do that, let me turn this in. 
And before we begin, I have to ask, does everybody have their water, their snacks, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever you have? Get a snack, get some water, and kick back and relax. Add Astra. Thank you for com- Alright, now we can begin. Uh... Where... Is this? Oh, it says return to the dorms. Ah, here we go. That's the right one. Okay, well, hopefully this is... Well, no, I know this is gonna be good, right? Go. This has to be good. Shit. I didn't mean to talk to you. Go away. The main Archon quest of... Yep, it is here. Finally. Here we go. Alright, let's kick back and watch. Great, Rinnies. I hope you enjoy the stream and this now is a little relaxing. After breakfast. Oh, this is the life. Wait a sec. Is it something important supposed to happen today? Oh, today's our big day. Oh, you have tea. We're Lovely. The of Come on, I have cookies. Masquerade of the Guilty. Time to Let's go. Time to go. Please sign here. This document will be I forgot we were still in prison Friday, too. I thought we left. The Fortress of Maripede via the regular channels. It's been so long since we've been to the surface. Let's hurry up and. Ah! Uh, what's happening? Are you okay? <sighs> I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, I, I want to see the whale child in Skirk what too. Was just now. Y'all about to die, that's what that was. Y'all are all about to die. Time to go. Y'all gonna get eaten by that whale. The wandering artist, welcome to the stream. You got Farina after 120 pulls on your main account and just two pulls on your alt. See, that's how it always happens. You always get lucky on like the alt accounts. <laughs> but congratulations nonetheless. Time to go. Ah, good to see you two. Is there something you wish to see me about? Yeah, what was with that earthquake just now? Ah, that. The tremor didn't originate from the seafloor. In fact, it seems it came from the surface. Over the years of serving as the warden here, I have developed a sense for distinguishing between what occurs on the surface and what occurs underwater. Besides, the seal that Monsieur Neuvillette set in place won't fail so easily. So the fortress is okay? If you recall our last incident, if there really were a problem, there would be crowds of inmates in a panic right now. Huh, you've got a point. Okay, seems we need to get back up to the surface and ask about what happened. Uh, by the way, do you know what day it is today? Hmm, I believe today is this month's pipe cleaning day. Wait, seriously? Actually, today is the day we say goodbye to the fortress. Ah, yes. Have you completed your release papers? Yep. Uh, it's you two. Uh, are you leaving now? That's right! Today is our last day in prison! But now that Paimon says that, it doesn't feel like we were confined here. It's actually been pretty nice! A lot of people have helped us out. Oh yeah, Paimon feels fond of this place now! Well, then be sure to come back and visit. I'll miss you. I'm gonna miss him too. Oh no, Star, you didn't get in the game if yet. Hurry up and get in the, the game. Release papers, then you're free to go. The guards will escort you out. You're not going to see us off? <laughs> I knew you'd ask. 
All right, sure. Let's go. Well, you actually agreed. Uh, no worries, you must be busy. Paimon was just joking. Did I get Risley? Uh, yes, I did. So you do have a polite Which is why I have no Primo gems left. After being down here for so long, I imagine you must feel like you're lacking companionship. Shall I come along too? No, that's all right. It's not like we'll never visit again. Yeah, don't worry. We'll come back to see you. Uh, Paima really likes the cafeteria here. The chefs sure do know how to make good grub. I hope you won't be here as convicts the next time I see you. We'll do our best to stay out of trouble. Well, it seems our work in the Fortress of Miraveen is finished. That's the end of another chapter in our journey. And since Nervalet was the one who asked us to come here, we should probably go report to him now. Next up, the Palais Marmonia! You're going to see Monsieur Nervilet? <laughs> Please pass on our kind regards. I'm sure just your regards will do, no? Hmm, I believe it would be the polite thing to do. You're right. I've heard the Palais has been terribly busy these days. Tell him that I hope he hasn't been overwhelmed by the recent string of troubles. Hmm. Alright, here we go. What was that earthquake, if not from the primordial sea? <laughs> Guess we'll see. Oh, it's loading. Load faster. You can't wait to see your husband who's let right. It's been 84 years canonically since we've seen you. Where are you, Husbando? Where are you? Wait, wrong way. <laughs> the Palais Marmonia sure is buzzing with activity today. Halt! Huh? Oh, it's you two. <laughs> Apologies, Monsieur Nervalet did say you'd be welcome at any time. Excuse me, would you mind helping me take a look at this report? I'll be right there. Sorry, I've got my hands full here, but you can see yourselves in. Wait, on the trailer, the whale appears on the opera house. I didn't notice that. I'm so busy. Seems a lot has been happening. She's so baby, even though I know she can <laughs> kill me. Right. I love the Melazines. They're so cute. They are. They are adorable. Oh, Hello. He's so You've hot. Come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. In the meantime, please have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, let the melusine outside know. That's all right. We just ate. Very well then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. Oh no, what's wrong? I should wrap things up for now. Are you done with your work? Yes, sorry to keep you waiting. Today should be the day you were released from the fortress of Meripede. And it appears that you have managed to complete all the release paperwork. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. right! And we came here to see you right away! Hmm, a massive whale. Do yes, and he's gonna eat us happy? all. Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the primordial sea. A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tivat. Therefore, we can only assume that child is presently immersed in primordial seawater. Hmm. Immersed in primordial seawater? What the hell? Hmm. Is he okay? Wait, he just said that a whale can't of that size can't be found in to that but correct me if i'm wrong wasn't there a whale that like fought during the battle between orobashi and a if i remember if i'm remembering the watatsumi lore correctly there was like a whale thing yeah maybe it wasn't as big never mind he's not from fontaine so he won't dissolve 
most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place. I'm yeah, I thought it was like a sure whale I thing. Have gotten there myself. Like in the deeper lore. There's something we'd like to ask you about. Yes? What is it? They just sat there and stared at him the whole time. Oh my gosh. The VAs of this game are 100. Yeah, they really are. All right. They're really, really too. good. We asked the Duke and he said it wasn't from underwater, so we figured you might know something about it. It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. The source of the tremor was here on the surface near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. Hmm. The water levels rose? <clears throat> oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time and have already returned to normal now. However, I still have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. Ooh, if the change Poisson in the water levels die. is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, then the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. Navia should be in Poisson, right? We need to go check on her! Yes, Spina di Rosula's headquarters is there. Okay, so... I know I've talked about this in previous streams, but remember the whole connection, or at least parallels between Conria and like the Fortress of Meripede and also Poisson because because they are they parallel with each other I'm just gonna say that okay anyway I would also like to go there as soon as possible but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet we must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I finish things here sounds like a plan There's no yeah, before everybody dies. Please be careful. Ooh, let's talk to our husband more. The two of you have my thanks. If you need any help, just let me know. Okay. All right, du poisson. Here we go. I can hear the name Melazine and don't think about FT go melazine what is that follow the wind is that like a fate game or something what is ft go rip navia rip time to go so like oh this is going to be so cool i feel i feels it is it bad if I hope that everyone does kind of die? <laughs> Is it really bad if I hope that everyone dies? What happened here? All the buildings here seem to be in pretty rough shape. There's nobody around. Were they all dissolved? No, let's not assume the worst yet. Oh shit, they are all dead. I wonder if the whale is a star beast who appeared in the on the alienist lore. Ugh, I can't talk. Maybe. Who knows? Did everyone die? We haven't seen a single soul all the way here. Oh, this is getting scary. <laughs> what will I ever do now? Disaster victim M. We couldn't even give him a proper name. Just stay put. We're coming up. Watch your balance. Uh, all right. Just hurry. Let me guess. There's a disaster victim F for female. I'm not young anymore. How will I survive on my own? <laughs> My Desiree! <laughs> oh, he looks pretty sad. Oh shit, did they really all? <laughs> My leg! Told ya, of course. <laughs> My leg! Of course. How could this have happened? <laughs> it hurts! 
Just hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. Holding your fucking hand is not gonna make that feel better, bruh. But I mean, thank you for the comfort. Regardless. No! Official XB, did you get... Did you get absorbed? Did you... Did you melt? Not Navia. I guess the name is French, hey, yeah. Navia, are you okay? <sighs> You're here. We heard there was a situation in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could. Yes. As you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact. Demoiselle! There was a wounded resident next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. He's wounded? How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... And eventually he what? Jumped down, then. Oh, Find no. the leader of Squad 1 and tell <clears throat> him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. Uh-oh. Understood. I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right, you'll be in charge. <sighs> I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, the situation in Poisson? Ah, uh, right. Allow me to explain. A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. At first, everyone thought that something might have exploded in the waterways. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water leaking from somewhere. Ah, Everyone shit. on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. Oh, no. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared they were all dissolved those who realized what was happening started yeah to this is getting in a real panic, dark desperately trying to get to higher ground many were injured in the stampede and some some people fell from significant heights hmm The Spina di Rosula initiated rescue operations as quickly as possible, but there have been a lot of casualties. Fortunately, the water began to recede after some time, and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the headcount, but we'll have some numbers soon. How awful. Hmm. And all of this just came out of nowhere. Yeah. It was quite frightening indeed. I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there any way we can help, Navia? You can put us to work. Thank you for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. You don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. Wait, we're missing some people, aren't we? Yeah, where's- <gasps> No! That's what friends are for! Oh no. 
No, they didn't dissolve. Not Melus and Silver. I loved them. By the way, where are Melus and Silver? <sighs> yep, they're gone. We've they're fucking dead. Here. Fuck. Uh, I'll be right there. <clears throat> Wait, is that Deku's English Sorry. VA? Is it? I need to go Wait, who? Now. Which person? And out she goes. Seems it Props to them for portraying it like a legit disaster, way. right? Oh no! Not the comedic relief. <laughs> okay. The wounded are being tended to, uh. and we finished a preliminary head count. More support has just arrived, so I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Uh, of course, we should remain ready for anything, and continue doing our best to rescue others. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Traveler, Paimon, would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Huh? Right now? I understand. Thank you. I'm just curious, are they actually going to get out of this mess or is everyone going to remain dead? I would imagine not everyone remains dead, right? They Hoyaverse is not that fucking hardcore, right? They're not gonna keep everyone dead. Time to go. They joined Child's Bathwater. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Yeah, the mood really shows the devastating state of disaster. It really does. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's like, why would you expect people there? The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Navia? There's no need to push yourself so hard. Well, magical death is different from actual death, so maybe it has a way. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Oh. By the way, who else is pulling for Navia? Me, I am. Sorry. I I just Malus and Silver. They won't ever come back here again. Oh. What should I do, Papa? Oh, that's from the trailer. Huh? Oh. What happened to them? Ah, oh, crap, I gotta change my element. We're a dendro right now, that's not right. Navia, I'm sorry for your loss. Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still, I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And, and they were caught in the seawater. Oh. <laughs> What should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But... But... I could at least hold a funeral for my father. And I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just... Gone. I just can't... Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus' grave. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. 
He wouldn't be angry, would he? How could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Oh, wow. Hey, stop joking around. Oh my god. I'm not gonna cry today. I'm quite serious. That way, it'll save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. That makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? Oh no. After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, mm. I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously. All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I'd promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. <sighs> wow. I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better. But, well, she understands how you feel. I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But now that I think about it, that never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Malus and Silver have helped me so much. But by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Nabia. We'll stay with you. Yeah, we're here for you. <laughs> Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obena, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina. Oh, damn, they got a list. Okay, I know what you're thinking. And you're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But we were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost was worth it. No one's sacrifice is truly necessary. Right! Don't think that way, Navia. One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Right. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes. You're right. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh, uh, really? Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. Don't bother! She's here. Okay. Uh, the knave? What are you doing here? Ah, uh, is everything going well on your side? Yes, my people are carrying out the mission according to your request. All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we're preparing to relocate them to higher ground. Oh, that's nice of her. As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Thank you. Very much. Wait, do you two know each other? Do they? We just met recently. Oh. Right, Miss Navia? Hmm, usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter. But that doesn't quite fit this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. 
Thanks to the Nave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area in any case, so it was nothing. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I apologize hmm. for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. Mark. My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking head counts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. As I've told this traveler before, Who I know dares of the prophecy, interrupt? and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. Without your help, hmm. there would have been many more casualties. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, hmm. I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. House of the Hearth is the best thing that ever happened. That. Well, you and your I guess it would depend on who you talk you to. Can. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. And they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They mm. chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. Mm. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. Water is life to Fontaine's people, and it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Terre. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Hmm? All right, then we'll just... Uh... Huh? This isn't right. Paimon thought you would ask <laughs> us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. That is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. But there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. Hmm. Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. Yes, yes, I, I, I do remember that, that, yes. There may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Mary. I think that was in the trailer, too. And this time, it was the water levels in Poisson. These are both signals. So, the time for jolly cooperation has come? Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's intelligence network with you. During some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. The ruins date back to ancient times and seem to be worth investigating in Remuria? Judging or the by first the civilization. The ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. So that's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremenay have all been all right, dispatched Rennie. to higher ground to assist effective Have a good residents. time at work. Thanks for joining. Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. Which is why I want to give you this task. Are you sure this will be okay? The House of the Hearths members see each other as family. 
But Linny, Lynette, and Fremini said that they also see you as such, Aww. even though you are not from the house. I'm sure you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh, that somehow makes Paimon feel kind of happy. Yeah, me too, Paimon. That's cool. I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Got it! So all we gotta do is go to some ruins, right? Pfft, we can handle that. Excuse me, but may I tag along? You oh no. wish to join, Miss Navia? Navia, but get to high are ground. Are you to exploring some ruins? You need to rest. Oh god, is she gonna die? Well, I'm sad, yes. I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. As my father's successor, I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, I'm also doing this for myself. I need something, a distraction, to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Alright, that makes sense. Navi is strong, but she needs company right now. We can be that company if Since she goes to explore the way, ruins with us. I have no objections. What do you say, Traveler? We'll go to the ruins together. All right. The ruins are to the south of Poisson. Here's the map. Well, here we go. Okay, the three of us will handle it. Come on, let's pack up and get going. Yeah, I feel like Navi is going to die. I don't know. I just have that feeling. I hope she don't. The transition in her voice, oh my god. No, that like that whole voice acting with Navia and Malus and Silver, that was fucking sad, but that was really good for their voice actors. And good for Paimon too. She kinda got me when she was like She she said she didn't know what it was like, but she understood how Navia felt. I don't know, I felt like that was all very significant and we should probably pay attention to everything that just happened in that cutscene. Yes, we're running there. We're not fucking to teleporting so that we can talk. Oh, my heart. I love Father and Linny and Lynette. Gosh, I'm a simp. Yeah, they're great. They're great. God, Fontaine. You know what? I didn't expect to spend as much Primo gems th Time as that I, you know, have spent already in Fontaine. But here we are and i'm gonna be spending more because well we know arlequino is gonna come out at some point because she's got a vision she looks like a playable character and then i'm pulling for navia and i'm probably gonna pull for the little melazine girl sijuin whatever her name is seem to be pretty ancient all right let's go in and have a look just be careful hmm can't tell if these are ruins from the first civilization or not right these look pretty basic as hell guess we'll have to wait until we get inside place of secrets Ooh, that looks cool I still can't tell what it is, though. Uh, we're gonna go with Daddy. Ice Daddy. Not Water Dragon Daddy. <laughs> hmm. Alright, guys, what ruins are these? Let's take a look. Okay, these are like the Fontaine ruins, actually. That kind of looks similar to Enkonomiya, but not really. If Enkonomiya is Greece, this is Rome. Boom.
Oh shit. You already say that as I'm fucking falling, Paimon, so thank you. Thanks for that. Oh shit. Don't want to miss this. Wait, did I miss a chest up there? I don't think I did. Oh well. It is what it is if I did. This place has also been contaminated by primordial seawater. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Yeah, you should go back to safety, Navia. Right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater. It's too dangerous, and it won't be any help for you to just stay here. Uh, don't get by my wrong. We're not saying you're useless. It's just that... No, you're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. From the look of things here, maybe there's no way back, which is unfortunate. Is Rome all right? Yeah, if it, it isn't, if it isn't obvious enough with Remus being the god that rules this region. Yep, 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 yep. It's Rome. That complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, do you want to wait for us here? This is not a good idea. I told you she's gonna die. The water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I mean, I'll yeah, but... I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. Seems like there isn't any other option. All right. Come with us for now, then. But please be careful. All right. Uh -oh. oh no, it's a dead end. Let's try climbing over from the side. From the side? Oh, do I have to jump out? Okay. Gotcha. And then we gotta climb. I gotcha. I gotcha. I understand now. Why the fuck are there potatoes and cabbage and everything down here? And should we really be cooking with these? Ooh. What is this? Y'all, I feel like this is like a preview to what Capitolium's gonna be. Cause y'all know, I believe that we're going to fucking Capitolium, which was the capital of the Remurian Empire. We're going at some point, I still believe that. This is like a preview. Well, what? Why the camera? Whatever. Wait, there's something wrong with this bridge. Oh, crap. Run, Forrest. Ooh, cutscene. Oh, this is when that happens, from the trailer. Oh, we talked. We talked. You all heard that, right? I'm not crazy. Okay, well, there you go. She's fucking dead. Great. <sighs> oh, good. She's not dead yet. <clears throat> Demoiselle? Huh? No, wait, something's Demoiselle, wrong. Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh. Uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Uh... Yes, it would appear so. Uh... Zack being paid, yeah, he I is. Must be tired. <laughs> That's quite possible. Mm. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh yeah, she's gone. Oh, she's dead. Right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. 
I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. Girl, you in a dream something or something? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just It's so to weird that this place is based off my culture. Really weird to see in game, but really cool as heck. Oh, are you Italian? Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Oh, girl. Uh, right. Yes. Or I French. Yes, yeah, sorry. Or French. Oh, Miss Navia. Ah, uh, Mr. Malus. And Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. How have you been? I've been great. Oh, we're Thanks in the sunken help, place now. Some merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes the force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's hmm. right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh, yes. One moment, I have it right here. Yeah, these are all the dead people. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Hmm. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Malus, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs... Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait, something seems to be off here. Yeah, girl. All uh, these people are the me, ones Adam. that dissolve. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. This is very similar to Sumeru. So few people around here. In that, are we gonna have to like Where wake them up or go? something? We must mind the time, Demoiselle. We still have important wake them up things from to the attend dream. to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Navia, here you are. I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. Trial? My trial? Wait, well, why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, Demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right, then. <laughs> Hmm. Well? Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. This is really creepy. What's about to happen? There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge... Uh, huh? Where's Monsieur Nervillette? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. Mm. But are you sure you can stand behind me? 
Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. Yo. Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously. <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I'm standing trial? My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus's successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, Nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. That is such a creepy line. Especially when you know that all of them have been reduced to primordial sea bath water. And all of their consciousnesses are like flowing and intermingling. This is so weird. This is so creepy. But yeah, this is like, this is really creepy. We are one big family. All of us who are from No, Poisson, we are not family like elite. that. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. That's Therefore, so creepy. This fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Whoa, okay. What are you saying? Uh, everything you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but... What is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Oh, One of well, us. If that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> Whoa. I know all these people. Why are they laughing? <sighs> I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right! Oh, they're aware. Uh, Malus? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty! Stay here, Navia! You're one of us! Whoa. Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mistress Ronville, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro! Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Mm -mm. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro, and in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now, hmm. I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. 
Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. So to point this out, um, yeah, this is like really similar to like abyssal stuff hive mind shit like the golden slumber this is like really a lot like that and also that overmind thing from all story quest the original sin is individuality that's the theory interesting hmm i like that and that's interesting have you forgotten how much you all once it's either that to or become love individuals to become independent oh i don't have it on auto anymore Do you yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, she got the crazy eyes we gotta get the fuck up out of here if your justice is flawed then why should we acknowledge it as you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. Uh, Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. Hey, Hisoka, welcome to the stream. I star swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. I like how the music is muffled. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I wonder Maybe. if it has something to do with her vision. Ray, Maybe. Joyville, Jolien, Essen, and Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malus and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Yeah, like... Silver and Malus defending her is so sweet. And don't admit guilt. Yes, go, we fathers. Protect, protect your daughter. End. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the nation of trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't hmm. let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Oh, Mr. hell no. Malus and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia... This is so creepy. <laughs> After all that happened... We're gonna talk later. Oh. Alone in Poisson. Oh. What are you saying? No more excuses. Whoa. She says we're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? Okay. These people. Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us. Miss they all became Oceanids. She. Like Vigne. Silence. And all those ladies that Vache killed. Oh, here's Daddy. Yes. This is so uh, creepy. Monsieur Nervillette. Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. Our thanks, Monsieur Nervillette. Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, Demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Girl, you better oh, listen and go. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that this shall be our last goodbye. Wait, no. Go with her. Loose. Silver. Oh, no. They're... Quickly. You must come now. They're goodbye. already gone. There was a... There were... Oh, no. Okay, so what was that, chat? Can we, can we talk uh, no, about wait. that? Just a second. Hey, Navia. You're awake. Good. 
What what I just happened? Dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive and they were they were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Yeah, Nervilette must be able to access individuals. From the primordial waters. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I. Hmm. Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. <laughs> it was only for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second. Oh. But they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Oh. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Wait, did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? So people that are dissolved become Oceanids. Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. <sighs> I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <sighs> To think that they'd keep doing so easy. Oh even shit, you were right. Death. Yeah, Piero, you were. What the fuck? <sighs> Please come with me. Nevelet, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite alright. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Paimon knows you're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm. I suppose so. By the way, Sijwin sends her regards. Ah, oh, Sijwin! I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way! Don't worry! She's doing fine down there! She's an amazing head nurse! Guys, I feel like this is I not see. the time for this conversation. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi! Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. Uh, let's chat about something else then. You're the expert here, Paimon. What should we talk about? Yeah, you're the chatterbox. So, never let. Uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Girl. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. He's literally the fucking Hydro Dragon. Yes, he's he's a goddamn this swimmer. Going anywhere. Uh, let's try something else. Um, how did you find these ruins? Did the knave tell you? Yes, in fact. Oh. I arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, Bother I went to the rescue. To the nave. And we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? I hope Navia can get back on her feet. Okay. Love is destructive. I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting like that. I'm feeling much better now. I guess we should get going again. Will you come with us, Monsieur Nervillette? Yes, if you wouldn't mind my company. All right! Another one joins the party! Let's get going then! This is such an interesting place. Again, this is like, I guarantee you, we're gonna be seeing this map again. And it's gonna be Capitolium shit. I guarantee you. Just take all of this in. 
But, um, okay, before we move on, can we, like, talk about what the fuck just happened? So, like, she was in the Primordial Sea. She was getting dissolved, but Silver and Malus saved her from turning into an Oceanid like everybody else. Correct? Now this just makes me wonder if all Fontanians were once Oceanids to begin with, and then they were made into humans or something. I don't fucking know. Oh yeah, and then Nouvellette can like, I guess he was able to help save her. Yeah, hopefully it isn't a one-time area. Hoya loves doing that shit. Yeah. But I think we're definitely gonna see these like mechanisms again. That's just my feeling. But who knows? Open. What the fuck are Hilly Billies doing down here? Right up the stairs we go. Maybe in a world quest, maybe. Uh oh. We are fucked. We cannot go back. Oh, I'm dead. I have no objections. Wait, so how am I supposed to get back up? They're like, bitch, you gotta climb now. How am I supposed to get back up? Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it zooms out for like a second. Didn't tell you. Is it just mine that's doing that or is it somebody, or is like, did that happen for you guys? If you've played this. I'm gonna stand in here for a second. All right, there we go. Until now, we have just part one of the act. I think so. How many parts are there to this act? Cause this is act five, right? It's all one act. We don't have multiple ones. Oh Lord. Everything shall die. Uh, you won't be able to play until tomorrow night. You're working in the countryside and your signal is weak. That's unfortunate, Piero. I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, this is old? It's the Titanic and Liyue, an old event? Wait, what? Who, uh... What is that? I want to know what that is. Like, what purpose does it have? It has those, like, energy thingies. Kind of like the Dainichi Mikoshi. Investigate the space ahead. Don't mind if I do. Looks like we've reached the end. This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. See, yeah, it I'm is sure giving Enconomia. Turns, but it turns out that this place isn't Just actually that Roman Enconomia. There seems to be something on the wall. Plates. It seems like they were put here as an offering. Uh, 
Could we take them down and have a look? Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. That was Farina, right? Yeah, that was definitely Farina. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh, say what? It feels like hmm. someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. Is she that Celestia? Dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? Okay, is that a... Is that a Garia? Or is that Farina? I can't tell. Or is that just someone else? And is that Lady Farina in the third image? Okay. Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And is that a ring of people around here? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? Wait, the how long image. ago was this? I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. Probably the first Hydro Archon, the so Agaria, right? Dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Yes, they do seem to match. <laughs> like, all oh, right, he can do like memories and shit with water or something. I don't fucking know. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it. Most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, hmm. Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, the Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. This says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still, hmm. Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. I get what you mean, Paimon. The issue is the order of the third and fourth images, right? That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third, where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. The second image is also quite concerning. What sin are the people in the images confessing to? If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. So Egeria. Egeria then. Or Egeria. I had never met her, but her appearance here does match the records. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies, as if confessing a sin. Okay, wait a minute. You've never met Egeria? So then when the fuck did you come into the picture, Nervilet? Also, it bothers me that they're saying this is the history of the future, almost as if the history, almost as if the future has already happened. If they're calling it history, it's, it's so weird. Okay, maybe there is some kind of factor that it has to happen so that Fontaine can be saved. That's what it seems like. Maybe, yeah, like it has to happen and then something else magical happens that Farina or someone else does and then everybody gets saved. Hopefully. Because I want Silver and Malus to come back. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, 
Why would she be in such a He's posture? just 500 years old? The fuck? I thought he was way older. Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left he these He probably forgot here? about it, true. Hmm. And it was probably his previous incarnation. It seems so whoever the original sovereign was and not Nouvellet. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah, we better get somewhere safe for now. Hmm. Honestly, who created the slates doesn't matter now. The real question is whether these things will truly play out the way they say. I didn't even know what that last part is. I just added in that last part. All right, we're done in here. That was pretty cool. Fuck. I hate it when this happens. Okay. While I'm doing this, let's talk. So what did we just witness? In the lore, has no mention of him before 400 years ago. Hmm, gotcha. That's interesting. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. So that is Celestia getting all upset at them. So I guess in a way people were right. Celestia was gonna fucking destroy Fontaine. Cause if they're behind all of this, then I guess people were technically right. <laughs> you know about the heavenly principles descending and then killing everyone. What's up, Sax? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Behindon's already beat! <sighs> just head back to the Fluff Sandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart but the Fluff well. Sandra is a Thanks fucking shithole. Well, Why everyone. can't we stay in the Hotel Bouffe de Té? I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. All right. See you tomorrow. Are you really going to talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets and will not give them up easily. Which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house you haven't at the even finished Risley's or Nouvellet's quest? So oh no, finish them. The previous Dragon right. Sovereign was not his previous way, incarnation? Oh, well, whatever. Navia and Nuvillet both depart. You and Paimon. Blah, blah, blah. Ah, we're finally back! Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Yay! And there's good food, too! Navia... Uh, no, the boss is the best. You did great as well, Paimon. There's like one <gasps> dessert really on the table. <gasps> Mona! Oh, that voice. Is that who I think it is? Huh? Mona! It's you two. What are you doing in Fontaine? No, what are you doing in Fontaine? Oh, wait, you're a writer for the Steambird. Never mind. Mona? 
I did pull for Farina and the first pull was a five star, but it was not Farina. It was fucking Dio. <laughs> oh, I got so excited when I saw that gold only for it to be fucking Dio. Lady Magistus. Mona, my beloved, I was just craving some cake and you appear here. Oh yeah, good point. Seriously, she does like cake. Nobody just uses oh my god, I can't with you here. Whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll. I thought you were poor. I into you, quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a mom's dad or surname? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was Interesting. Nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Hmm. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. You do have secured pity, but you're thinking if you want her a Chlorand once she launches. I want both, but honestly, go for the Archons. The Archons are usually good, like really good. Yeah, damn the RNG. I was so disappointed with that Dia. Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Barbaloth Trismegistus. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Moon Sister references. Moon so Sister references. I know, right? The entire oh, Hex and Zirkle are all Moon is. Sister references. She used to call herself Magistus, actually. But once she took me in, she changed her name to Triss Magistus. Talk about excessive. <laughs> Magistus I hope we can meet Barbaloth one day. Of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. How about Triple Strength Trappler or Triple Appetite Paimon? Terrible! <laughs> uh, but anyway, you're not Fontanian, are you, Mona? You're from Mondstadt, right? Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, it's nice to get this clarification on her origins, by, by the way. Like, it's real nice. I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. Yeah, that's... that's... abyssal goop. Primordial sea goop. Child's bath water. Skirk's bath water. Did you come to Fontaine because of the prophecy, Mona? Is, is that Alice's name? No, Alice, no, Barbaloth is someone different. Alice is not Barbaloth. Yeah, they're two separate people. But they're both in the Hexen Circle, though. Did you come to Fontaine? Or did you mean Trismegistus being like her surname or something? I don't fucking know. Did you come to Fontaine because of the prophecy, that was Mona? the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel. No, Sax, I've not played that, but I heard about it. She is an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. 
I don't know if I have Mona. I don't think I do. I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine. Her and Chi Chi, I don't think I have either of them. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. A visionary? <laughs> Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. The old hag could do it. And I bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zerkel colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Like Nicole. Or literally any of them, probably. Now, who do you think made this prophecy? Do you think it was someone from the Hexen Circle? That would be really interesting if it was. I need to ascertain the accuracy of the prophecy. Could you help me get in touch with your master? Uh, uh, are you sure? Hmm. All right, I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona. You're amazing as always. Ooh, good to oh, know that we'll be oh, able to talk to her soon. This is something only I can do, after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. Thanks, girl. Bye. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. Well, we were making a ruckus. Try to keep it down next time, Paimon, because it's always your fault. Oh, you have her C3, but no more Kachings. You have her C5, Piero, and you have her C6? Good lord. Uh, if Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks. Huh. The things Paimon does for you. All right, all right. Thanks, Paimon. Hmm, that's more like it. <laughs> that's more like it. After the conversation, you decide to get a good night's sleep to replenish your energy. Ah! So, Lay, you have C2, Mona? Good lord. <laughs> But it's time to get up, Traveler. We agreed to go see Nivellette, so let's pack it up and get going. All right. Okay, so when do we get to fight the whale? Not that I'm not enjoying this, because I am, but when do we get to fight the whale and be Moby Dick? Oh gosh, Pierre, that sucks. You've lost every single 50-50. I'm so sorry. You still don't have Kaching, and you've been playing since 1.2. Good lord. You're here, finally. Uh, is something wrong? Monsieur Duvalet and Lady Farina, they they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Uh-oh. Like I said, I've already explained everything! And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please, tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fosalor, are you not? Look at this! This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. Ooh, he's putting <laughs> pressure on her. Seems like an appropriate name for the whale, right? They're all... Yeah, they're dead, girl. They're abyssal goop. We did Bath not arrive water. in time to avert this disaster. And I will not have it happen again. <sighs> I will say this once more. 
You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. Hmm. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct, which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three featured different images that seemed to correlate to the prophecy. The prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't! I've never seen such slates! I'll hmm. ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I hmm. understand your concerns, but I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Why does it feel like she's lying? Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina. Yeah, I like I how they have screen cuts as well. They've been very playful. Matters. With the editing. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is so sad. Is See more play all returns itself, to nothing. Oh gosh. That you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. Watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. <laughs> you. Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Hmm. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Well, damn. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! I don't like that. Girl, people are literally dying. Huh. Okay. Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. She seems deeply troubled. And deliberately hiding something, too. I assume you've been outside for a while now? Oh! You noticed! Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic, though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again, a state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding, so why did she keep refusing to engage? Ashikai is probably right about Farina not knowing the whole plan, but being devoted to her role, having full faith in her part to save Fontaine, poor soul. Yeah, she's probably... <sighs> well, okay, she... It seems like she knows more than what she's saying. But yeah, I agree. She doesn't know the whole plan. Have I played this game on JP? No. I've not really changed the language on this, not because I haven't wanted to, but because like if I'm listening to an Archon quest or whatever, it's just it's just easier for me to listen to it in English, especially if I'm not looking directly at the screen so that I can still understand what's going on. Seems like the last play is about to begin. Oh, gosh. Well, here we go.
I'm afraid questions alone might, might not suffice. We need to make her understand how dire the situation actually is. Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. And the question is why? Why won't she reveal she anything? No choice but to speak. Mm. Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. But Farina's seen so many trials, and she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Nervalette's voice actor, Ray Chase, he's so affair, good. But we must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her. You played on JP because of the Seiyus? Well, I have to listen to, I'll have to listen to some of them. Is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. Because I've heard, like, some really famous ones from particular animes have voice acted for this game. Like, what Seiyus... Are playing certain characters he's so fine i mean his voice too yeah he's oh my god nuvelet is just oh farina reminds me of a music box doll dancing to the tone just because not knowing what is happening nor what to do that's a very good analogy hmm. but who will lend us their aid to do such a thing mao you've seen some things oh lord don't tell us about these things A few days later, on a boat somewhere in quiet Poisson. Did she go to well, see? That's everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That well, naturally hi, makes it the best choice. And here you are drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? That's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, What's up, you know? Linny? Care for a cup? Where's uh, Fremine? Uh, lend me your ears, everyone. Hmm. Or perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Oh, there he uh, is. Me? No. I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. <laughs> oh wait, is well, this then, um? I guess we're lucky. We've got a local like Is me this Ridesley's boat? Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a oh, little long-winded, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> you might be right. Anyway. To cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well, uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Glorand, and used on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. <laughs> Oh. In that case, <clears throat> do any of you have experience hunting? Not that I oh. recall. Fremenet and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, um... Oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? 
Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, hmm. I'm afraid not. You may or may not have heard, but Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachose Hunters. Oh. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. <gasps> oh, we're getting interesting lore. Everybody listen, everybody listen. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. <laughs> hmm. Calm and steady. And okay, but what are we hunting? Kind of who would catch loads of fish. Are we hunting and Farina? I be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevelet? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. But I do have one more question for you, monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment Almost device two hours with this quest, yeah. This is if we taking wanted a long to keep time. The prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, hmm. So, are we going hunting together? Huh. We hadn't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kind of works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. <laughs> if our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, then the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. Oh, this is gonna be fun. We get to judge Farina. Put her on the stand. I want Bryce Pappenbrook to voice someone in Notlon. He does so well. He does well with absolutely feral voice lines, and I feel like Notlon is going to be a shit show in a chaotic good way. Oh, definitely. Definitely. An Archon hunt. Time to hunt some gods. <laughs> a plan to let Farina become a part in her own play. Oh. All right, well, let's so see. So that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. Hmm. Florence's hunting metaphor was just that, a metaphor. You will not call this a hunt because that is not what you should do at present. Nor has the relationship between you and Farina rich reached such a dire stage. What you need is simply the secrets she is keeping. 
Attempting to take her secrets is an act of sacrilegious disrespect, but must be done to prevent Fontaine from sinking into the waters, as foretold in the prophecy. There is neither hunter nor prey, but there must be a trap. That is what you will need. Cool, the stage of fate. Hunter's Prophets is the next part of this quest. All right, the plot is thickening. Okay, I'm just wondering at this point, how does Child and Skirk, how do they come into this? That's what I'm waiting for. Time to go. <sighs> it's been a tough few days, hasn't it? So much has been happening. And those meetings sure did make me hungry. Hyman <sighs> didn't think the meetings would go on for so long, but everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? So we gonna gaslight our girly? I Absolutely. Be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremen I was now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Do you feel more confident after the meetings, Paimon? Uh, well... It's hard to say. Paimon I know, but I will not tell. Thank you. This sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great. More importantly, how did they form a master-disciple relationship? Good, good question. Uh, huh? Uh, is something wrong? Uh, did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! No, I didn't. Then what's that? I don't know, maybe there's a ghost. Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. Okay. Wait a fucking minute. Hold on. Isn't this the fucking tea set you can find in the Dawn Winery? And this belongs to fucking Nicole? Cause that sounds like Nicole's voice. Wait a minute, what the fuck? Wait! <laughs> Is she like D Luke's mama or something? <laughs> No way, I'm pretty sure this is the tea set you can find in the fucking Dawn Winery. Someone please confirm this, because if that is the case, that is wild. Nicole, what is your connection to D. Luke? Is, is D. Luke your child? Oh my goodness. Yeah, come pick up your mama. She's talking some weird shit again. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, 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 okay. <gasps> Who's that voice? Uh, uh, but there's no one here. Ah, oh, have you forgotten me already? Wait, you are familiar. You're the voice. That we would heard from be the fucking insane too. if she's like <laughs> D. Luke's the mom. Voice from the sky, hmm. I fear that description is wrong. So, not completely wrong. Huh. You're feeling lost now, just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Okay, Hisoka confirmed. They are. Oh my god, that's wild. That's fucking wild. Okay, so what's her connection to D. Luke and his father, Crepus, or Crepus, however you pronounce that? Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> okay, who are you and what do you want with us? We already knew that the that Don Winery was connected with the Hexen Circle Witch Club. Yeah, we saw that on the cutscene. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but like to have it now to know that it's Nicole specifically, that's crazy. Oh my goodness, that's exciting. Okay. Mm, consider me a passerby. Just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. Friend's disciple? So this is one of the friends of Mona's master? The enigmatic N of the Hexen Circle? Allow me to ask you, 
Will Fontaine's prophecy come true? The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? The, then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? There it is again. Fate. Can there really be no exceptions? Well, she told us last time that fate can be changed. Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the what things the fuck? that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? That's such a chilling line. Because Travail Trailer, Dainsliff said the same thing about Conria. In the hidden corners. Where the god's gaze does not fall. Ooh, that's so... Ooh. Ooh. No, Marcus, I don't know why you er erased that. You right. N is the one who married. No, yeah, like, it's it's been theorized, right? That the Dawn Winery may have some connection with the Hexen Circle because of that one event with D-Luke. And then, of course, the event where we were able to see all the teacups of the Hexen Circle members. So to see that this tea set from the Dawn Winery is actually the one that belonged to Nicole means that Nicole has some connection with the Dawn Winery, right? Which is crazy, and I love that. Yeah, the lore bombs are just crazy. What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but it also sounds kind of scary. The tea in the teacup is just about gone as well. I believe that is you it? understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice. It's gone. Mage N, is this the clue you're leaving for us? The unexpected news leads to complicated feelings. You lie asleep in bed for a while. When you wake up, someone oh, seems to be really? blah blah blahing. I want to hear someone talking. Oh, all right, all right, coming. You're getting more diligent, Paimon. Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Luna! I'm gonna be honest, I did not expect this many, like, Hex and Zirkle lore drops right now. <laughs> How have you been these past few days? Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes! It was Charlotte! You remember her, right? That daredevil journalist? I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but... How can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Wait, wasn't I supposed to- Oh my god, I forgot to change his element. Shit. Ah, yes. About what we had We gotta do this before. after this cutscene. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Actually, someone already came over. Huh? You tell Mona about your mysterious guest. Goodness gracious. Are you serious? I believe she came to pass a message to us. She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. 
pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hex and Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. Dendro, yeah, MC, and Fontaine literally thing. unwatchable. I know, I'm so sorry. Has mentioned her a few times. <laughs> she said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the Hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Okay, good to know. So Barbaloth is a few hundred years old, which realistically could be like 300 to 500, right? And N's been around a lot longer. Again, did she write the fucking prophecy? <laughs> Was it her? Don't spoil it for people who know, but was she the one that wrote that original prophecy for Fontaine? That would be insane. I hope they have an interlude Archon quest featuring the Hex Hexen Circle soon. Oh, that would be everything. Goodness. So the gods can set a future i.e. that cat will jump, but behind the scenes they don't know from, where, or when. That's what it kind of seems like. And D. Luke Papa clapped that? Damn, sir, chill. Oh my goodness. Maybe she is Creepus' ancestor. That would also make sense, too. Maybe she has a connection to, um... To the dude who is definitely D. Luke's ancestor from Venti's time, you know? That red-haired dude, that knight. You guys remember him? The one that helped beat Decoravian? Did Kaya's dad choose the Dawn Winery because of the Hex and Zirkle ties or D. Luke's dad's position with the Mondstadt government? It could have been a mixture of both because if we really think about it, we know that um, Rhyndaughter, who is from Conria, is in the Hex and Zirkle, so it would make sense that Kaya's dad would choose a place that has ties with the Hex and Zirkle to drop off his son, right? But it also makes sense to drop him off with someone who has ties to the Mondstadt government. And also, if Ashikai's theory is correct about Creepus being like the original 10th Harbinger, maybe there's a reason in that. It'd be interesting. You need to go to sleep. Have a great time full of lore bombs. Okay, thank you, Soleil, for joining. Have a good night's sleep. All right, but anyway, this is just the start. I'm still shaking with the lore reveal later. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. The Hex and Zirkle sounds like a scary group, but they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Also, I hope by the time I wake up, Sun and uh, part Moon Part 2 will come out. Oh. I suspect she means that there is still It won't be there when you wake up, around. but it will be there on she It'll be a very special present. Be, though, Let's just so. say that. Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. True, her words were meant as a helpful hint, but when will we realize blah blah blah? Was that the best answer that my question could have gotten? Traveler, Paimon, are you two all right? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational. But fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? That's the right attitude. You do have a point. <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh, I need to get going. Don't worry about it, Mona, and thank you. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. 
I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Paimon feels kind of moved by what Mona said. But also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler! Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go! That Let's was go so hot. Sunny. There's a few spots we always like to walk by. That little scene was so sexy. Oh my god. D Luke's father, Chad as fuck, he rizzed up the. R yeah, yeah, they, they must have been so fucking hot together. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if she's like super ancient, then maybe she is like an ancestor to the family, and she's like the matriarch. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is so good so far. And with her connections with Prophecy, maybe she foresees D. Luke's birth. And that's why the Dawn Winery has its name. That's very interesting. You know what? All of this makes me just want to go back into the Ragenvender lore. Like, just reread everything. Reread, like, Vanessa's time period stuff, because there was a Ragenvender ancestor de who dealt with that kind of stuff. Read D. Luke's lore. Like, oh, that's so interesting. Change my traveler element. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, we gotta do that, we gotta do that. Can you imagine, son of a Fatui Harbinger and a Hexen Circle Witch, and he's hot? Like, he was just set up for success. He's got everything, he was born with everything. Fucking d Luke, man. All right, statue's blessing. No way, that's the wrong one. It's worship statue. Could the Hexen Circle ties be another reason Kaya was dropped at the winery? Very, it's very possible. Oh. Shit, I have to play as him, don't I? Brand online about to have a field day with new content? Yeah. If he loves the Traveler, he's really going to like this Just stuff. Like, really going to like the implications for this. Ah, fuck. No. I will get this one day. There we go. Alright. Actually, we're going to keep him in the party, because... Yeah. So I should probably... Hmm. Now nah, we'll keep him in the party. We'll keep him in the party. For those who don't know, yeah, D. Luke's name literally means dawn, while Creepus's means like twilight, which is so interesting. <laughs> Makes you wonder what the mama's name is. Okay, hello? Hello? Hello, am I back? Are we live again? Okay, great. Yeah, sorry. My internet, like, it does this thing where it disconnects sometimes and then it comes back. Because I have a... What do you call these things? These little Wi-Fi sticks? I don't have, like, an Ethernet cable, which I probably need to get. But this little Wi-Fi stick sucks. It keeps going out. Maybe we're famous? Let Paimon see! The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. I actually really like Charlotte's yes, character. Did an become the focus of this report. A blonde adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. 
Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet. The Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her. She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? That sure seems to be the case. I want to shout out to Onion and Ashikai for real for posting or for posting streaming late at night. I own a bakery. Oh, cool. And bake overnight and love having something to listen to while I work. Well, I'm glad that you can listen to this while you work. Hopefully this is relaxing and super chill. Onion, you should probably use baby and Dora. Oh, I should. We're, we're going to change to her in a second. Yeah, Wi-Fi sucks unless you have a gaming router. Yeah, I need to get that changed. Ugh. So Paimon will forgive her this time. <laughs> How gracious of you, Paimon. All right, let me change from Sorush to Endora. Let's do it. Sold, it hasn't already sold out for the day. It was so delicious the last time we tried it. Despite the tense situation we were in, let's give it another go. I'm sure it'll be great. We can't let anyone get ahead of us. One for the cake. The cake oh, what? fuck. Someone showed up after all. Oh, wait. You're the one from the Palais Mermonia. Oh, are you here to buy cake too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait. I like her voice a lot. That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Mm, usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh... Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Jesus, oh, the Paimon. See, um, to be honest, so I haven't paid much attention to that. No, gloomy. Still, even that is not the no word I wanted to tomorrow, use, but you get it. Keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Huh. She sounds so cute and cheeky. Yeah, Don't no, her sad. voice is like really Excuse perfect me, for. Could I have this character like the way These she's acting slices are for you Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad oh you know Sijuin? i sure do mm -hmm. she was born before me and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans she said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily, yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> Bye. The melazines are so sweet. Here I am in my office listening to your stream. It's been nice having something to listen to. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad I'm giving you something to listen to. Delicious. Sax, you're used to hearing JP, so hearing it on English is kind of weird. Yeah, I imagine, but it's, you know, I think the English it's voice like acting is actually pretty right good, time. so. And the flavor gets even better with the Hopefully you like tea. it. It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow. Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. 
Oh god, Paimon, there you go again, getting depressing, because everyone's gonna get fucking wrecked by the primordial waters and drown. You just have to remind me of the impending doom. What's up, Nyx? Welcome to the stream. She has a sassy transatlantic oh, accent, and it- we're near the Seabird office. Let's go look for Charlotte and have a chat. Yeah, it fits her so well. Wait, was there supposed to be voice acting for that? I guess not. But when I played Nervulet's Quest, man, the discrimination toward those creatures. Yeah. Yeah, Nuvalet's quest just makes you very depressed about the Melazines and how people treated them. Wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? Yeah, we read some of it. You've got some nerve! You just used up to make some quick mora! Can we negotiate a profit split? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? When Mona mentioned you, we thought of coming to see you at work. <laughs> I see. It seems you've already bumped into Mona here in Fontaine. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Oh, of course it doesn't! That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. You seriously want to interview me? Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Uh, Who yes, knows? we are. If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it! Oh damn, Star, but that took right a now, long course, time. I'll need a few days to prepare. Oh! In that case, we'll just chat when you have the time, then? Oh, so that's a yes? Oh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... <laughs> oh, so oh Sax, do you now. just, like, skip most later. of the story? Wait, Charlotte, Paimon's still got a question for you. Hmm? And what's that? If... Just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow? What would you do today? Why is she asking huh. these questions? That's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Ah, uh, someone's well, smart. I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly... I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From oh, what okay. I've seen, most people don't know what they do. Oh she yeah, Nilu's quest was super boring. Truth, Nothing against Nilu, but like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. Aww. And then you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not Aww. a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. But anyway... That's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's... so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kinda envies her. Anyway, mm. let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? This is getting very depressing. 
I want to spoil so much, but I can't. I can't wait for your reaction. It will be priceless. I will just say I have a new favorite cutscene now. Interesting. Hyman's been thinking. Yeah, Charlotte's voice is good too. Yes. If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? <sighs> These questions are very important. Now let's see what his answer is. No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? If I could choose, huh? Hmm, it's just like Charlotte said. Suddenly trying to consider what to We've do is pointless. We've to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. I feel like this is very interesting, especially since we're at, like, kind of a midpoint in the game. These are the questions we should be asking at this point, right? Until that moment comes, I think I'll keep journeying on. You mean, still traveling? Yes, cherishing every single moment that I have to look upon this world. You've changed a lot, Traveler. Because as soon as you found your sister, like, several patches ago, you were just ready to say, fuck to that, goodbye. But now you're taking Zhongli and Venti's advice. You're enjoying the adventure. Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? The banter goes back and forth between the two of you as time slips by. As night falls, you return to your accommodations and end this busy day. The next few days are just as calm. Charlotte comes to find you and conducts the interview in the Spina di Rosula, safe house at the Fleuve Cendre. Navia, having finished her business in Poisson, even drops by to take a photo with the two of you. All goes well. Uh, until everything doesn't go well and everybody dies. Ah! Feels like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. We still have an important task to do. Yes, we do. But it's still better we than gotta the save the world. Therapy, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Marmonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervilac sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the fortress of Meropied. Uh, so are you under the impression that we might be wanted criminals? <laughs> Technically <laughs> we are. I'm well or at least the traveler is. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Right, we gotta love the character growth. Let's hear it. Did something happen? Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her, loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. Hmm. And before she could respond, others started to join in. Well... The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. I mean, so you can't really blame the people. The blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. True, but at the same time, she is their god, so... And she hasn't visibly been doing anything, at least to them. So I... You can understand why they would be, like, pissed with her, right? I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Is this the trap the they set? I have no idea. And that further argument was pointless, 
She claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marisha say Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. Uh oh. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marisha say has dispatched many people to search for her, but we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? I understand the situation. Good. Monsieur Nervilet sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Yay, Your Star, work. congrats. This is more than enough to go, go play. On. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. Hmm. So that, that was the trap. Like we should hurry over to put salt in. Hmm. <laughs> you sure caught on quickly. All right, so everything is going according to plan, I guess. At the end of the Tavashian travels, if the traveler had to pick their sibling or Paimon, I feel like they'd pick Paimon. Each patch keeps pushing Paimon and the Traveler's Bond more and more. That's true. I kind of wonder about that too. I'd believe that they pick Paimon. Too bad they're like really kind of... They're kind of foreshadowing that we're gonna be separated at some point, which will be very, very sad. Hot, they don't know what happened to the God of Salt, do they? Oh God, we don't talk about the God of Salt. If we Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Yeah, her own Instead, people stabbed her. She'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervale was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Mm-hmm. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Okay, okay. Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? Okay, Paimon. I see becoming a detective's done you some good. It looks like those detective novels have had an effect on you. In that case, there's not a moment to lose! Poisson, here we come! Did she go back to those really suspicious ruins? Time to go! <laughs> Alright, let's see. Oh, I'm getting excited, y'all. Looks deserted. Guess all the survivors must have evacuated already. All that's left here are signs of devastation. Could Farina really be here? Let's try to find her as soon as possible. Follow the wind. Oh, she is. Right over there. She really is here all on her own. Shh. Stay quiet for now. <laughs> no. Go away. Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. Oh, that was from the trailer. I'm so sorry. Oh. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? Farina. Uh, who, uh, who's that? Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. <clears throat> <laughs> so it is you, Bla 
fun traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, you were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh, what do you mean, tear stains? Oh, I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. They even dare to doubt their archon. I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellet and those people from the Marish to say Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> God, her voice actor is amazing. Stop trying to act tough, Farina. You're actually beyond devastated right now, aren't you? I... Uh... Not. Liar. Hey, there she is. The Hydro Archon's over there. Oh. Okay, well, they found her. Quick, after her. Oh, God. Uh, Farina, those people seem to be after you. Uh, they are? <laughs> They're just some rabid fans who want to cut the line because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? Mm, that's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Girl. Uh, Farina just ran off. Quick, we have to catch up with her. This isn't much of a mob, it's just three people. Damn, they really looking for her ass. This should be the place, right? Hey, Farina! There's a good hiding spot over here. Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you. Uh, wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here! Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. And so the prey is caught. Now, how do we get her to confess? <sighs> I went exhausted. I totally thought they had caught me. Uh, no, I mean, I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> this place is not what I'd call soundproof. You might want to lower your voice to stay hidden. Uh, yeah, shut up. You're right. Yep, that's a good girl. Oh. What's happening? The ground's shaking. Is it an earthquake? Another disaster struck, I suspect. Just struck. Yeah. A quake of this kind preceded the flooding in Poisson, didn't it? It can't be. It's happening again. Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. Nouvellet's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah. I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... Yeah, they already gone. Has Farina finally reached her limit? Now that she's talking about her actual feelings, she's starting to look far less stiff. You begin to talk amongst yourselves as Farina slowly calms down. It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to VAT, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But 
all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of Informants. the divine. No matter what we do, the will of the heavenly principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. Wait, what kind of informants? Does she mean Oceanids? But that doesn't make any sense because the Oceanids don't recognize her as the Hydro Archon. Well, anyway, whatever. But even then, you still haven't given up, right? Yeah, someone needs to give her a big hug. <laughs> give up. I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. But that would also mean that all hope would disappear. Indeed. I've thought about giving up so many times. Especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true. And so many people have already lost their lives. But just now... It all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long mm. as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. That's don't the worry. spirit. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. Alright. Good. Well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden. Damn, but she switches honestly, up quick. Considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. We're running out of time. We can't just go back to square one like this. I have to get more information out of her. Farina, you might not have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden? <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. Interesting. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? Interesting analogy. <sighs> if that's the case... There's no time left. Please, Farina, just spit it out. <sighs> What? Huh. Oh, that's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Whoa, that was cool. <sighs> so, this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice. The embodiment of justice itself. Does a 
not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. Oh. You... you would draw your blade against a god? <clears throat> I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. The Traveler could also be called a therapist. For real, though. Paimon can't believe it! She... she just surrendered! More Ace Attorney? Yes, what more Ace Attorney. Going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... a human? Wow, how utterly humiliating. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? It would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. You sure I'm sorry, have. Everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I, too, am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> but now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice! This time, I will protect you. Applaud mm. and rejoice! One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words, this shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine! The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fosalor, will now begin! Woohoo! Oh, now we're making history. <sighs> this is over it. Feel like Farina just took over the whole thing. Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? All right then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Oh, there's Lynette. I didn't even notice her there. Thank you, Your Honor. Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. We were so close to getting her to tell us the truth, and it still turned out like this in the end. It's okay, though. As long as we can defeat Farina in court, We'll still have a chance to figure everything out. Here we go. Oh, he's so hot. Also, please allow me to ask as a final question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can mm. go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Hmm. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. 
So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina. And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance Damn. it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, That's a lot of prep work, welcome. to be honest. Of course, this performance was only made possible with father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. Oh, okay, we there we go. We select a location, construct the giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words, the earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. Sorry about that. We deceived you back there. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for hmm. you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. No, you guessed wrong. Oh? My mission was to give you one last chance. We hoped that you'd share your secret with us before the magic box arrived onto the stage. <laughs> So, then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> you did. It's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Uh-oh, here we go. Yeah, the only thing we can do now is judge the Hydro Archon. Still, I can't help but be a little bothered by that conversation earlier. Sir Prosecutor, what did Farina want to say to me? To pass this along. This God is damn a document it. that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. It's kind of interesting how everything has come full circle. Because, like, didn't she say in the Hydro Gemstone? that even she can be judged. So yeah, everything's come full circle now. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, let Paimon see. Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh, wait. Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Oh cool! It's a super practical gift. I never would have thought of using it this way. Let's quickly confirm the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, alright? Oh god, are we gonna go over through our, like, our whole the journey? You Archon in the very first duels you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, alright? I 
didn't think that you'd wind up getting to the bottom of the case I'd been following all this time. I guess you could also see this as a happy coincidence. And now we have to put everything together. This is the first time Monsieur Nervilette had a difference of opinion with the Oratrice. Even the Hydro Archon can't figure it out. But Fatui Harbinger, she's an extraordinary person. Her instinct must mean something. The fortress of Meripede was almost destroyed in a single day. That I didn't witness that scene personally will always be a source of professional regret, I think. According to Monsieur Nouvellet, both Narwhals, and that Narwhals, whale have swimming been in the, in the ocean, at that time. causing a commotion, cause they are so awesome. That's all I can think of whenever I see the fucking whale. I nearly lost my awesome friend Navia. To be honest, that still gives me shivers. The words of someone as extraordinary as a witch can probably only be truly understood when something surreal happens to you. Tea time with N. All right. Are we ready? Let's get this mystery solved. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. All right. <laughs> Nervilet. There's no need to repeat Giant Narwhal, yes. Legalese. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true. But my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. He's talking. Instead, He's talking. I would like to charge you as a fraud who's never been the Archon in the first place. <gasps> Wait, what was that? Lady Farina's a fraud? You know what I just thought of? The Persona 5 music that's like the din 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 Ding, 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 ding. That's what I keep thinking of. Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking our duty, but did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? I Charge guess not. Accepted. Okay. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? <sighs> what is the meaning of this? I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? There is no way that I, Fosalor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Liar. Yeah. Even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. Hmm. See? <laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor. Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. Nah, girl, what we're not going to let you get away with this. No. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? You have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. The people only see you as their Archon, because that's their long-held belief. Well... I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And yeah, that's if a good I question. was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? 
I've got to think carefully. What do we know to be special about Farina exactly? Hmm. Child's conviction, though Nuvillette believed Child to be innocent, the Oratrice judged him as guilty. The meeting with the Knave. Because she was like, she doesn't seem like an Archon. You may be a member of another long-lived race, which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. Such as a curse. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. It doesn't matter who gave us the information. What matters is the veracity of the claim. A curse? I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. You once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. Interesting. Especially considering that Archon Residue is kind of like a curse. And it fucks people up. But in light of this claim, perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You hmm. said too, huh, So, Farina, instead of an Archon, could you just be a cursed human? Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, uh, I don't think that's the answer. It's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. I mean, that is true. Oh. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, Everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. The possession of authority. The manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. Wait, that one trial proved the opposite. Farina actually has no control over the Oratrice at all. Child's conviction you proves that. To reference the Oratrice. But weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There Girl, you no lying. There is need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. Period. You'll prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. Mm. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That You're in the hot no seat now, baby. Rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. Exactly. <laughs> You neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. Mm -hmm. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> so you're saying it's flawed. 
Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. Sure, we can put the Oratrice aside for now. But then, Miss Farina, could you give us a brief demonstration of your power as an Archon? Ooh, this should be good. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. Ooh, you can't get out of this. <laughs> you, you don't need to go that far. A brief demonstration of your power over Hydro should be quite harmless. Surely an Archon can at least match the capacities of a human with a vision. I... Uh... Oh yeah, Paimon doesn't have her glasses, that's Hydro disappointing. Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Ooh, Indemnidium! Geez. Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium! Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives! Have you ever seen a more Yeah, she's she's losing god? this. <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Uh, yeah. yeah. No matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? Good question. Ooh, you losing. Seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still but you the are. same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? Please? You've got to believe me! Uh -oh. If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And then all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? Enough! That's enough! Tell me then! If I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? Yeah, that's a good you question. You have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such. Then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument. Uh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. If we can't prove that she isn't the Archon, we can try to prove that she is just a human. And if she's only human... Hmm... Okay, what's relevant? Hmm... Is it this? Yeah. Are they gonna try to throw some water? That all Fontanians can dissolve in water from the primordial sea. And that means... Since you insist on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here Oh, are here they just like gonna straight up to say, let's kill her? of you being the latter. Miss Navia. Please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. Uh, super sorry, mm -hmm. Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak. Oh, that was so hot of him. I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a massive flood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives. Including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? Oh yeah, they're just I like... believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon. Touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But, if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. 
Hmm. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Oh, they're literally the just like... Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. Yeah, let's just kill her. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? This is kind of like a witch trial. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a witch trial in the sense that, you know how witches... Basically, you would be... You'd be the witch would be innocent if she drowned and she was guilty if she floated. So basically she was fucked either way, right? This is kind of like that paradox. Die or confess, basically. Uh Farina? Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. Hmm. <laughs> well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. Hmm. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. That could only mean... What's going on? Is she really planning to... That's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> what? Hey! She actually... Present, Miss Siegewin. Please come forward and attend to the defendant. Siegewin? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. That should be enough. Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Siegewin. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that she was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. Thank you, Miss Siegewin. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait, what did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? No, girl. Well, not at all. Considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... You... But what's really going on here? Marina can't have not known about the consequences. This is too unlike how she usually acts. Unless it's actually more important for her to keep up her facade than to save her own life. That's interesting. Not exactly the same because witches aren't real, but Archons in this world are. So the, this poses no risk for her if she is an Archon. True. 
Unlike a witch, she wouldn't end up dead if she was an Archon, but... Farina's VA did an absolutely phenomenal job. Yes. But hadn't she given up on everything a long time ago? Listen to me! Listen to me, everyone! Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks! What happened just now didn't prove a single thing! Think about it! How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? Also, also, if I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? <laughs> Damn, she is stubborn. Please, everyone, anyone, just listen to me. I swear, I really am your Archon. I don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone. The odds are just too stacked against her now. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. Uh-oh. Wait, is this when it sentences her to death? I don't think anything she says at this point will sway her to be too stacked against her now. Oh. In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... Oh, that's in her mind. Okay. Guilty. Guilty. But is... Oh. Are they actually going to sentence her to death? Or is that also going to be in her mind? Oh. Now she's on her throne, alone, crying. Like we the prophecy. We shall return to the Oratrice Mechanique Danalise Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... Hmm? Well, what's wrong? What's the Oratrice's verdict? It can't be. Did the Oratrice just declare Farina to be innocent? No. The Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The a Hydro, Hydro Archon, Archon guilty. guilty to be punished via the death sentence. Oh. The, so they the did give sentence? it did give her the death That's sentence. One of the available sentences? I've always thought that he was just a myth. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrice? We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things so she'd tell us the truth! How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences, is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? That is a very good point, Paimon. Yeah, he literally murdered people. What's then? Then again, I guess people have been killed by Farina's negligence. I guess what's more strange is instead of Farina, the Oratrice rendered judgment on the Hydro Archon. So if that's the case, then who is the real Hydro Archon? Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. 
But now, the Aura Tree seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this mean? All right. The real one's inside the Oratrice, then. Um, it has to be. Excuse me, if I may interrupt. Sup, Fremine. What you got for us? Is the trial still going? Fremine! Oh, you finally made it! I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. What did she assign to you? With some help from the other Fatui, Fremine brings a stone. Is oh! That the first prophecy slate? Okay, a bunch of Oceanids. <gasps> so the knave privately arranged for Fremine to try and find the missing slate. I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But. Has the trial already concluded? Then... Doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no... Father will be disappointed in me. Don't worry, the mystery hasn't been resolved yet. It's still not too late for you to shine. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Fremine. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. <laughs> Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates. We'd like you to come here and confirm their contents. So it shows Egeria, huh? a bunch of Oceanids. So what, what is it? This looks like the previous Hydro Archon releasing her divine power, turning the Oceanids into human beings. So that is, they are Oceanids, all of them. I believe I've now made sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. But why would she do this? Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kind of talking about? In truth, everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. An association between the contents of the slates and the events in real life. Okay, let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paima will do her best to help you remember. Okay. Select to check the descriptions. Okay. You can find the scenarios, blah, blah, blah. The very blah, 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 blah. Once you have finished, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The first stone slate describes what you just said. It seems to show the previous Hydra Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. This has very interesting implications. Does that mean that Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimo wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. Yeah, so they reverted back to Oceanids once exposed to primordial seawater. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating in the sky and the Hydro Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. This must be the point when the Hydro Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydro Archon sin are the same thing? The third slate shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy hmm. the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydro Archon crying on her throne, and so on. Right. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if. Hmm. 
The stone slates in the ruin showing the prophecy describe a history of the future. The first piece that was originally missing has been found by Fremenea. She yeah, okay. Turns out that people can be okay. Um It should be this one, right? Yeah, it should be that one. The case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater, and the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. He spoke again. All right. It shows Celestia floating in the sky and the Hydro Archon and her people worshipping it together, but the heavens still brought judgment upon them. Down upon them. It should be this one. That doesn't sound Oh, never mind. <laughs> Evidence of Celestia's... Um... This one? Yeah. Perhaps what is about to take place has all happened before. The true sin of the Hydro Archon that Nervalet mentioned, and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, has recorded on the stone slates. Mm-hmm. All right, this one shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea, surrounded by many people. Who did we see that happen to? Navia? It's not as simple as falling into the sea. When Navia fell into the sea, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. The stone slates show the people gathered around the Hydro Archon in the sea. Could that be alluding to the same thing? Hmm. All right. It shows a scene that is basically identical to that described in the prophecy circulating throughout Fontaine, Fontanians will eventually be dissolved into the sea, and the Hydra Archon will sit alone on her throne and weep. Um... Is it what Anne said? That doesn't... Uh... What's the evidence providing for this? Oh, well, it should be this, right? The prophecy from the stone we all gonna found die. its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. The fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, yep. which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly. So, Egeria created humans out of Oceanids. They'll dissolve into the primordial sea, but won't cease to exist. Their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid! Kinda makes you wonder what Seelies are. The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Hmm. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness, and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripede was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what! The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light! We got it, people. All right. All right, so how does the whale tie into all this? Huh? Oh, Paimon gets it now! So that's how you can make sense of it! But then it feels like... We're going to have to share some truly shocking revelations! Let's hear them. 
the first slate reveals that Fontanians are not real humans. Incredible. Linny, did you hear that? We're not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater. And how all the girls Vashay dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Wow. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. The second slate reveals that the crime of the Hydro Archon was her creation of Fontanians from Oceanids. Yeah, it's satisfying to see all these theories come true. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. Which makes me wonder why she did it in the first place. The Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us? And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the Opera Epicles. <sighs> the twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. As for the third slate, I'm still convinced that it should come after the fourth slate. Yeah! Isn't the image here just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? Unless it shows us judging her, which just happened. Okay, the fourth slate depicts the fulfillment of the prophecy as it's widely known. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. All right, I'm excited. What's this going to be? So my comment from an hour ago that the sin could be related to the Oceanus was not far off from the spot. No, it wasn't. Well, did you get it? You were pretty, cl pretty I close. I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Are we going to get a cutscene? Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. Interesting. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. Wow. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the Primordial Sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, 
Their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. Hmm. So you... I... We were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Oh my god. Deny the truth. the truth. We can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian, but it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slate's respective positions are, in fact, correct. Yeah, so the third slate represents the trial that just happened. I'm guessing. And then the fourth slate is the result of the trial, which is Farina sitting up there alone. Everybody turned away from her and doesn't believe her. Oh, that's so cool. Most importantly, create individuality, giving Fontanians a chance to choose. Thus, the first humans of Fontaine are born. Right. The Heavenly Principles don't like that. Interesting. So they are in the right order. What is the third slate supposed to represent then? A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the Primordial Sea. The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment yep. and justice. Yep, yep, yep. You may yep. also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. <laughs> Can't be. Yes, it refers to our present situation. Mm -hmm. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. You know what's interesting? If they're fake humans, why are they still getting visions? You know, it's interesting that it just it just further suggests that Celestia is not necessarily responsible for handing out visions. But anyway, what should we do? I don't know. It feels like there's no way out of this. Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. <sighs> is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled? Soon? Yeah, like Albedo and Scaramouche both have like visions, and they are also in your created deductions. beings. About the fourth slate, you probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could, in fact, only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As the whale. For the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. I have? Wait, could it be the whale? Narwhals, narwhals, swimming in the ocean. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. The evidence that verifies the intrusion of the Primordial Sea into the Fortress of Meripede. Um... Hmm. 
yes, Ganyu has one, but she's not sinful. I'll put it that way. So like Albedo was created by presumably another human. Fontanians were created by Egeria, which was a sin. And Skarmouche is a puppet. That's not really sinful. But still, it just seems like it's it's just interesting that these people would get visions when Celestia presumably wants them all dead and does not like them. She is afflicted with some sort of curse. The Oratrice judged him as guilty. <sighs> Which one? Is it this one? That doesn't... No. Is it this one? Oh, it's the whale. It Herb was derp. both dream and reality. Oh, I thought we were going in order. A true culprit. That could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? Yeah, it's the whale. Can we kill it? The truth, the original sin, the trial and the root cause of the disaster. Okay, but why has it appeared now? That's my question. Oh, fuck. Are we all about to die? Oh, shit. It's not necessarily about them not being human. It's more about being created. Oh, shit. <gasps> Child. That was random for it to pop up here. That was so fucking cool. right i'd wager that's also the one child saw when he was young so we've met it at last i understand very well why it is chosen to make an appearance here that whale does not belong to tevat it is a monster that has traversed the stars weeping all the while oh it has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea using it to grow so it that is like is a the star beast for the rising sea levels and once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Oh, so it wants to, like, eat everyone. Got it. Therefore, when it left the primordial sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that harbinger for buying By the way, where is Farina? Without him, the whale would have likely I nearly come forgot about her. Sooner. From the way he looked, 
He must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. Yeah, like, where is she? She's, like, that not Pedalmania. here. We've always known that he had a special connection with that wheel, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this. Anyway, now that we know that this wheel is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy... It's the abyss. It was the abyss all along. The prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? It is too late. What do you mean? It had already absorbed too much of the primordial sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? Hmm. What now? What the do we do now? Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. After everything, it still turned out like this. We couldn't fight against fate. Wait, but if this is all about fate... Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Hmm. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Thanks, Nicole. Could it be that even if the prophecy will be fulfilled, there's still there will still be a way to save everyone? But how? Did I miss something? Wait, I forgot about Farina. What was it that she wanted to say to me at that last moment in the giant magic box? What is her real secret? That's the question. She's the key. Ooh, what's going on now? Oh, what's happening with the Oratrice? I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. Oh, she's still sitting there. Marina! Great. No, I still need answers. Wait, who's that? Was that Farina? Oh wait, th she looked different. My mind went, I love fishes because they so delicious got gold fishes. Oh my God. <laughs> Child fighting this thing for a while is really impressive. But really though, yeah. Ooh. You. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it says, uh, Farina. Sorry. That shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, the sweet sound of Bosalor. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Okay. Fosalor. Why did you deceive so us? So there's a difference between Fosalor and Farina. Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving. 
The heavenly principles. Oh. Deceiving the heavenly principles. It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only Oh yeah, she does have the same pattern, vo dealt. like speech patterns as Farina. I did not choose this. No, I think this is the same Any VA. I chose yeah. To be one of her What's up, Stoic? Familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand. Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The ah. man you see before you now is that divinity. And the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. Okay, so Farina is the human and she's the divine. Interesting, okay. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Oh, okay, so if you guys saw the tweet for the introduction card of Farina, this is literally the line from it, but the person was like a sinner or whatever. So, okay, that makes sense. So the person talking was Fosalor. Got it. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. Uh. All part of the plan, of course. <laughs> the plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember She's the like, so anyway, yeah, I cur prophecy? totally cursed her. The Hydra Archon alone. Totes cursed her. her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, mm. she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, do forever play the part of the god from the prophecy 
all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has <laughs> indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been 500 years. Wow. And all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. Hmm. I like Farina even more. I came into contact with Farina's tears. If I remember correctly, tears often contain something. With a sufficiently strong hydro sensitivity, I can form an emotional connection, just like I did with that Oceanid at the Fountain of Lucene. Wait, could this be Farina's inner world? So this is interesting because If you look at hydro slimes, right? Hydro slimes trap people in bubbles, right? What's interesting is that for the Golden Apple Archipelago quests or whatever, they used bubbles to represent each special domain. So here's the slime theory once again working where we're once again in somebody's inner world. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, anyway. Farina, what is she doing on stage? Wait a moment, ah, oh, crap. I shouldn't have done that. If I can speak, if I can directly speak to that self, I might be able to easily get what I wanted to know. I came here for answers. Either way, this opportunity is not to be missed. Let me try talking to her. Go for it. Let's see what happens. The wind knows it. You're in the Lee community and you've always been a big fan of hers. Yes, yeah, she's great. But no leaks. No leaks. No leaks. Oh. Yeah, so the body is Farina and the soul stage. is the divine Fosalor. I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. Well, she said the body and spirit are Farina and then the divinity is just Fosalor. Wait, okay. Oh, come on. It's me. Uh, Farina? All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand you. Don't there look at no me. Don't look at me. Your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. What was that? But I don't see an audience here. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. Something's off. There's no getting through to her. Even in her heart of hearts, she's still playing the Hydra Archon. What sort of resolve? Blah, 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 blah. I have to find a way. Poor Farina, like, I feel really bad for her. What sort of resolve must she have that even her inner self and subconscious would have such an impenetrable defense? I have to find a way. Time to go. Dear audience, the performance is experiencing a technical difficulty, but will we not? The guards shall resolve it soon enough. Wow. Hey, what gives? The audience is 
is still watching me, you know. Guards? Wait, where are the guards? Guards! Real talk, the VA has such a fucking amazing range. For her to do Fossilor and then also Farina. That's all the spotlights turned off. In Farina's heart, they must have symbolized the eyes of the people on her. Speaking of which, I think I just received some sort of signal. Was that her truce? Whatever. Hmm? A ticket? When did that end up here? Ooh, pretty ticket. Either way, looks like the show is about to begin. In that case, show me how you truly feel, Farina. Scene 1 Before a Mirror, Farina. Oh. Oh, are we playing her? Cool. Oh, hey, Julia, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I stream. We'll have to catch up. I'm sorry. I know we talked. You know where we talked. I'll have to catch up with you. I'm so sorry. I didn't respond, though. I'm going to need to respond. I've been good. How have you been? Shackles and chains are what they called them. Yeah, because that's essentially what this role has been for Farina. She's like a prisoner. She's cursed. Farina. Farina. Huh? That's creepy. Who is that? Who's calling me? Where are you? Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Wait a moment. You're near me? How can this be? Hmm. <laughs> Near you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Near me? W what do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? <sighs> Wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow the people will all be dissolved into the waters and only the hydro archon will remain weeping on her throne only then will the sins of the people of fontaine be washed away oh <laughs> very good you know it well what's going on i can't seem to remember anything clearly the only thing i know for sure is this prophecy will it really come to pass <laughs> yes it will and that is why i've come to you disaster will come to fontaine sooner or later things will develop just as the prophecy declared there is no escaping it mm. but doesn't that mean everyone will die? So the analogy of the I music box Fontaine, doll like eternally dancing was also will spot on. It too? was. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? Hmm. So, if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales, with all the people of Fontaine on one side, and my pain on the other, 
Is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this hmm. prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But so this was the initial how conversation. A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed. Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. That's so Remember, interesting. Your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But mm. I promise mm -mm -mm. you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial. And everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. Sorry, I'm so silent. I'm just I'll listening. I'll be looking forward to it. Yeah. Wow. Scene two, a, sen a session speech. Arena. Okay, so this is when she addressed the people of Fontaine when she became the quote-unquote Archon. Okay, Farina is not my favorite Archon. I want to give Farina a hug. Voice directors, okay, time to talk to yourself. <laughs> That's all right. I understand. I've been okay as well, just an insomniac. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're doing well. The Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Summon your courage, girl. Ahem. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epicles. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Farina de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalis. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more assertive. Hey, did you hear that? 
She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all powerful? She's being so modest. Hmm. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person then? Uh, if you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Near me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence, one who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. <laughs> oh, very good, my people. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. You hmm. may consider my previous act this a is so sad. gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Ah, uh, so that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Her personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful. Her future may yet be bright after all. It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. Hmm, interesting line. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosilor, stand within the Opera Epicles, so long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Oh, damn. <laughs> and so begins her torment, having to act like this for 500 years. Opera House Arena, scene three. Fun fact, listening to one of the podcasts and, oh yeah, the Ryden VA, which was featured said, they achieved this by having the director feeding the other line for them to act out when the VA has to play two characters. That's an interesting way to do it. That's cool. Naughty Bunny, hey, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. It's been a while. You're so glad you saw a notification from me. You haven't seen a video from me since my Union Cross days. Glad you're ma- Yeah, I'm still making videos, barely, on Genshin. Yeah, Farina, for a lot of people, seemed to have- A lot of people didn't really like her, from what it seemed like, or at least a section of people. But now I hope they grow 
on she grows on people kind of like Nahida did because like a lot of people did not like Nahida at first either Farina being my favorite now is a real 180 as I hated Fontaine BS at the start oh my goodness but you understand now why she needs Nuvi to be here absolutely she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing she needs help Lady Farina here are today's case reports as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal <sighs> Come now, was I not just at the opera house in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nervalette. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> Is there two How of her? Basically. Understand? That's true. I there's the human her, and then there's the divine her. Thought, Lady Archon. No need for fright. Yeah, this is from the and trailer. Do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. Okay. How long is the Archon quest? Well, we're four hours Please in. Holy up. shit. I, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right. Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the that one sounds like Dia's voice actor, but I can't be too sure. To bring your words back to him. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. You don't like quests with too much lore? I get that, because sometimes it can be overwhelming. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son. All right. And I'm guessing this is her researching the prophecy. Uh, Lady Farina, uh -oh. here are the latest hydrological reports. Yep, As probably for is. The specific parameters you asked to take note of. I'm afraid things still don't look good. I, see. I liked her from the start. I did too, actually. I thought she was funny. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Have they found anything? I'm afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods, after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. But you know how I said um, a while ago that I thought that the Archons would be based on Joan of Arc? I'm s I am getting Joan of Arc vibes from both Farina and Fosalor. I can explain later, but I'm kind of getting vibes, especially now. The day is finally over. I haven't had a moment to breathe this whole time. But it's good to see that everything's getting on track. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going. 
Gamer, that's one place they're based on. Yeah, we, I know that, and a lot of people know that as well, but Don't that's... They're this. based on multiple things as well. Tomorrow's a new day. Scene 4, Opera House, Farina. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. There'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before. Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. <sighs> I don't think I let anything slip today. God, this is so I exhausting must show for her. That there is nothing to worry about. I just. Don't know I feel sorry for her, but as a character, well, she's not my favorite. Fair enough. Exhausted. Best to rest early today, too. She's so pretty. She is. Scene five, Opera House Farina. How many fucking scenes are there? Like, I'm enjoying this, but girl, I just want to fight the fucking whale at this point. It's been 84 years, i.e. four hours. Scene, oh my God. Poor Farina. Lady Farina, it's, oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Dioteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> French opera has five acts. Oh, that makes sense as to why this Archon quest all had five indeed. acts in total. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer, a descendant of a line most ardent. <laughs> Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are, are you crying? Oh. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> oh, really now? I didn't even notice. Mm. Uh, this must be the overflow of hydro from my person. <laughs> well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? Uh, no wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. Wow. By the way, I had a theory thing that I tried about the hypostasis. You decoded it to a math so question in Geometria. And then you used the combined word in Google Translate into tech so language and it told me I'm crazy. Here. Good lord. Just how much longer? Yeah, this is this is pretty much like the heat of it in a different perspective. Basically, perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. No, oh, Lord. Have I reached my limit? No. Perhaps I reached it long ago. She didn't even realize she was crying. Oh my gosh. Notice my own tears. I want to tell Yeah, the weeping in the fountain of Lucene. About this. But would that not destroy all I've done so far? I have conducted so many investigations across the centuries. But there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act. 
Then is the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. Hmm. You know it's leading to something soul crushing because Hoyo has to Hoyo, right? Opera House Farina and. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Yeah. That's my voice? Is this scene from when we were within that giant magic box? This is great. I didn't think that this scene would replay in her inner world. Surely, I'll find out what she wanted to tell me this time. Share my burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared... Right, Zack must be so happy. ...you can confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. A witness? Huh. And Sarah as well. Yes. <laughs> I've heard that or you Erica, excuse me, not Sarah. No, wait. Stars, yes. in other nope, words, I got my VAs all mixed up with that. Here. And if to that is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... Hmm. That's what I thought. Okay, Sarah, and Erica is the VA for Venti. Sorry. But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. Yeah, he called him a witness. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> the traveler just That's slips okay. in, just them Gucci slides on. What oh my goodness. It's really all right. Farina, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To mm. find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it long and hard. Hmm. <laughs> no, I have nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon. Even of then, she still Everything didn't give it up. Will surely get better. All you to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. Wow. <sighs> she really committed to this thing, huh? Fine. Oh. Oh. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works. But that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. Hmm. I'm sure you've long since that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you. Yep. Hidden within the machine all along. 
Am I right? And then I became one with the oratories, taking Fontaine's gnosis with me. So she yes, does have it. It would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. Oh? In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the god of justice. Oh. Uh, I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the oratories take down the god of justice, it will also take down the divine throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratories. So she could but kill really, herself. Some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored wow. within the oratories. In but order to kill a god. Only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the wow. Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. So the position the itself. The divine throne. The throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent. You must be. Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. Oh. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. Oh. oh okay. Okay. Oh. No, oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Wow. Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. Hmm. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? They Ingeria were. Ingeria stole the power of the primordial sea, and the heavenly principle stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. Mm -hmm. I, for my part, am the god of justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. That's right. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, Justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on. That should be the justice enthroned over all others. Wow. At this point, we, 
Whether it be myself, or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Hmm. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. Wow. Oh. No, don't go. <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Yeah, I thought everything was going to explode because a god died. I guess not. The people are innocent, but the kings must perish. Yes. Thank you, Karina, for all you've done. From this moment on, Please live happily as a human, just as I wished we could. Oh. And now he's the full dragon. And he's got the gnosis. I, Eudex Nuvelet, hereby declare. People of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. Oh, that's so cool. If you're a scrape. What was that? What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. Oh yeah, the whale. But we still have to deal with that. still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must mete out punishment to that beast. But... Didn't you say just a moment ago that it can't be defeated? I guess now we chase Moby Dick. ...to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. 
We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. You obtained power just now? Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. You... you mean me? The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine. The beast that enacts the prophecy. Its name is the all-devouring Narwhal. Narwhal, Narwhal, me, swimming in the ocean. The hour of execution has come. Oh my gosh, you horny. You horny. Lenny and Lynette and everyone else has just standing there. I wonder what happened to him. Right. He got his title. Oh, this is so exciting. Good question, Pie Guy. sharing some power with us. You know, it being sorrowful reminds me of um, what Elinus said about, you know, when he was first born. Or rather before he was born and he was just like in that darkness and he was really sad. The old devouring narwhal cannot resist its to devour. Continue to trigger its hostility. Chance will present itself. Oh, this is gonna take a while. This is gonna take a long while. Oh god. Visitor from the far side of the Sea of Stars. What is this thing? Ooh. Y'all hear that music? It does look like something straight from the Antimatter Legion from Star Rail. Oh. Did we kill it? A star beast will drink the amniotic fluid of the world dry. Yeah, the description definitely does fit. Whoa. Gurk. What the fuck? Why did she throw child in there? Thanks what? For helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but oh well. Okay, explain. This supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, your I master's had a pet that at some point, but they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder! I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. Disciple, your master's pet. Who the fuck are you, Skirk? Who are you really? My power. Who are you exactly? She said earlier she must be Child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he has the 
impression that she was the uh, less talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring narwhal without using power from beyond this world. Forbidden knowledge. So you may speak to me as equals. Okay, lady. Also, what's going on with her feet? She's really weird. What sort of person would take the all-devouring narwhal as a pet? I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. It eats too much. And I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. Hey, uh, Miss Skirt? She just called Child Week, she you did. Might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His him? name is Sertologi. 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 Hold on. We're doing a quick Google search. The fire which with which the giant suitor will set the world on fire and thus destroy it. Oh. Interesting. So it's Norse. Huh? I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Huh. How should I describe him then? Have you heard of the name The Fowl? The Fowl? The Still Fowl. nothing. Well, how about The Visionary? Vetterfulnir then? Or gold Rhine daughter? I'm oh, sorry, you what? Know what we've heard. Rhine daughter's part of the Hexen Circle. She's Albedo's mom, right? Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhine daughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Paimon didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you. No, tell us, goddammit. The goddamn devouring it. narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? No, there's little to be surprised out about Paimon. It is natural after all, the prophecy will surely come true. We knew this and accepted it. However... Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the heavenly principles. Hmm. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Oh shit. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. gonna get rid of all the water
Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, there's Risley's ship. All hands initiate emergency. Daddy's here to save the day. Genshin's version of Noah's Ark. Basically. I mean newbies right there, true. This is so cool. It's a miracle. The water is receding. We didn't dissolve. The prophecy was wrong. The prophecy was wrong. What kind of bird is that, by the way? Does anyone know what kind of bird the game classifies that as? Genshin's version of Noah's Ark, yup. This and some other things solidify for me that we're in the happiest timeline for this era of humanity up to that. The solo renewed! The Spirit of Rasula talks post-disaster rebuilding. I recently visited Poisson to meet with Miss Navia, spokesperson of the Spirit of Rasula, and we spoke about Poisson's present and future. Old soil can still give birth to new bloom, Miss Navia stated. Hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night. You just need a little of it. Skyship Winglet, Boon or Brain of the Fontaine Research Institute. The various disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have suddenly become a shield over the Institute, with Jurier turning out to be a once overlooked hidden gem. People always call the first researcher mad, but few know what to call the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Wow! Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports! Are those really Jiria and Navia? They sound like real big shots! They might have been real big shots from the start. We just didn't meet them in that capacity. What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. The articles do make me curious about how things will play out. Hyman's curious too! Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we watch everything happen from start to finish? What's there to be curious about? And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on, let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. Yeah, so aside from the center, we have the visionary, the foul, and then gold, which we already knew about. The Wow. Oh my goodness. And based on Mona's description of what a visionary is, 
It's someone who can basically prophesize big events. That's one thing. That's so interesting. All right, I'm gonna... <laughs> There's so much we need to go over, y'all. Wait, where do we need to go? Oh, to Poisson. You know Risley's been wanting to take the horse out of that barn for the- Right, yeah. He's just been waiting for a moment. And he got to use it. you uh, what brings you all here hey we're just having a look around i'm here to update myself on how things are going here hmm? oh the fatui are here too uh, uh, let me introduce you this is mr garun snezhevich he represented the knave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. The Vitui are the We've good guys? But we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as Espina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? Yeah, all of them have Norse roots, which smells that like Conria. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You hear too close? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really Maybe they are Hex and Circle out. members, some There's of them. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision makers. And, well... Which one would I be named the Foul? Connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel, about what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Ugh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Ugh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand, at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let him off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up and smile. There, there's so much that we need to talk about. We're not gonna talk about it tonight because I need to process everything. Holy Your shit! Really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. Oh yeah, foul legacy. Now we know where that comes from. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clorand. Wow. You really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress I don't know if it's America. just me, but Skirk feels like a mix of Child and Shinha. Maybe. Kinda. You already knew she was going. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess too. I asked Sijuin who told Monsieur Nervillette and he told you, right? That's a very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nevillette asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. 
Uh, stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. Go to the Fortress of Meripede. All right. You seem curious about the fortress. Of course. Uh, that Risley. I still remember going down to the fortress to grill him for information on my father's case. Boy, did he take me for a ride. Without telling me anything, of course. But he did invite you to tea, didn't he? Two large pots of it, in fact. It was good tea, though. I have to agree. The tea there is very good. Ah, <laughs> speaking of that, would you like to have and some And the fact today? that Skirk seems to be stronger I mean, than Nouvellet, right? this foul well, is serious. Yeah. Shortbread. Oh my gosh, this has so many implications. It's like we've got a menu or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm, good. What flavor of biscuits would you like, Mr. Snezhevich? Me? Uh, I'm fine with anything. But I would prefer chocolate, should you have it. All right. Leave it to me. I'll go over the newly arrived supplies with you later, Mr. Snezhevich. We should be able to finish the preparatory work today. That works great. What for is me. going to happen to the Gnosis? I have no idea. Is it just me, or did you get a new lipstick? Uh, I did. Because the Fatui still want winner. that thing, right? Want to give it a try? I think the color would suit you too. The Fatui has Deku's VA. Interesting. Yeah, I have no idea what's gonna happen to the Gnosis. Just wait. To this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Yeah, we haven't even seen a fully powered up traveler. Way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much rumored Duke. Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course. All right then, this way. Ooh. Um, What's going on? Oh, there's that one dude. And there's that one lady who are in love with each other secretly. Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um, Miss Charlotte, do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier. Hmm? Imagine so if Skirk's master is Mr. Nine. Uh, but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies The it. author of the Princess Might Fischl series. Be very important to you then? Wouldn't no, that be something? I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle. The ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? Huh. Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? Really does know how to squeeze opportunities you for all their worth. My answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Huh? Did you really have to use the word couple? Well, yes, he did. Solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. <sighs> We've seen this kind of thing before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll be mar married before Seems the end like of the year. Here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? Uh, no. Uh, uh. Hey, Miss Charlotte, why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure. Come on, Miss Sejuane, over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Oh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the fortress? 
same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jurier? Miss Lurveen? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, which is a pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. Hmm? I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine, and the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, God. Oh, that doesn't seem actually, fair. What about you? Are things going to change for you, too? <laughs> what change can there be? The fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone, the photo shoot's done. Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go. Till next time, everyone. There'll be a next time? Maybe, who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time. Until then! Alright, last stop, the docks. Alright, last stop, the docks. Y'all, I... Ugh, there's so much I want to say. From the visionary shit to everything... Oh my god, oh my god. Those three should be heroes too since they helped Child escape from him. Right, they should be. Like, I feel like it's so unfair for them to get extended sentences. Is that how justice is done? Wow. And Child got stronger again. Like, his fight with the whale is no mere feat. Seeing that Nouvellet was thinking that it was invincible without the full power of a dragon lord. Yeah. Yeah, like, my sense of power scaling is very off right now. Because, like, holy shit, there are a shit ton of powerful people into that. But I believe in the Hoyo Riders. I can't wait for them to make me cry over a picture again. Oh, my goodness. Yes, make us make us feel the feels, Hoyo. mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, oh, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal, but if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. You could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. <laughs> uh uh, not us. You could Girl, just look make elsewhere. A like Fremine here. Isn't that right, Fremine? <sighs> Is this what you meant by I'll help you make some more friends? To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Fremine socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Sounds like that would suit him. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant. Powerful, yes, but Fremine none of them himself. have a dull blade, so In very future, good point. I think we can leave True. underwater escape magic to him too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette. Could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. 
My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. So, how have things been, Traveler? I'm doing all right. Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Ah, uh, that's all right. We were more than happy to help. So, what's she doing now? Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well... After Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a... diplomatic gift. A diplomatic gift? A gnosis? Oh. Yes, I was quite oh. surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. Now that's how you get a Gnosis without being violent. I would agree, but I've also heard that... It seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Hmm. Uh, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? Pilot didn't think he'd have the time for that. To the topic. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Child? They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. Oh. Well, I guess I can call him one of my war buddies. Oh. That's true. When you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fratui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. So shocked by such a simple switching of sides? It's Arlequino, babe. Father! Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the Traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. Are you going to take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? That is our duty as harbingers, yes. Yes, don't please, Father, be playable. Sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Hmm. So does that mean you will eventually betray the Fatui? Will you keep your... Will you keep to your position? Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. That is a what no. What is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? Yeah, I feel like she's gonna turn coat. As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. Well, all Gnosis except Venti were given in negotiations, true. True, true. But like, even with Nikita and Dottore, she kind of, it was kind of given up, I don't know, reluctantly almost. Actually, I just remembered something. Please help us deliver this. A vision. <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. There's so much to think about here. That's a wrap for me. It, huh? You... You're... Greetings, Miss Journalist. Uh, um... Hello. If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will. The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, 
I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Yeah, Arlequino is just like Farewell. really suspicious. She's just Farewell, like really father. calm and chill. She doesn't seem insane, like child. I didn't even dare to take a picture. Insinuated. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. Well, at least for now. Enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met, too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two. All right, so we're wrapping up. We're getting close to the end, right? We have to be because all we have left is to talk to Nervilet and then Farina, right? Hopefully we do get to talk to Farina. By the way, are we actually gonna meet Egeria or Egeria? Like her consciousness? Because technically she's in the fucking tree in Sumeru. So realistically, we could have a quest about that at some point in the future. Plus, again, we, we have to go to Capitolium. And she's very invested in Remurian history, more than likely. I'm pretty sure Ajax was going off her vibes. Probably. All right, Daddy, what you got for us? Do you think Remuria will be like Enka and the Chasm? Absolutely. It will be the Roman Enconomia, <laughs> basically. Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting. So I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Aw, Paimon's glad that you remembered. Thank you for keeping us on your mind, what with you being busy and all. All right, let's have it then. How was Fontaine actually saved? The whole business is still quite the mystery to us. Um, <laughs> it is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. Hmm. Oh, okay, so he does tell us the truth about Fosalor. Whoa. So that's what happened? I only saw Farina's part myself. Fosalor destroyed the divine throne of the Hydro Archon and restored your power to you, transforming you into a fully fledged elemental dragon sovereign. But Paimon still doesn't quite get what you did to save the Fontanians from dissolving. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the Hydro Element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the Primordial Sea, with constitutions similar to that of Mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally hmm. no longer be dissolved by water from the Primordial Sea. Fossilor must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone! You could say that, at, that it was at that moment that the Fontanians were tr finally truly born. Uh-oh. OBS briefly disconnected. Are we still good, people? 
All right, about the initial verdict that was passed on Child. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association, or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind. Nah, she did that so he could hold off the whale. That they finally became real humans. Uh, hang on a second. Pyron suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, okay, you're still here. Thanks, Stoic. Also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah, Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge. In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. Uh, Paimon sort of gets it now. Either way, it seems like this ritual won't be of any hmm. further use. Okay, but interesting. Come as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. About Fontaine's future. Yeah. Ah, oh, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me, before leaving the Opera House. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. I would be too, after Having playing said that, that she role. She then packed her things and moved out of the Opera House, not unlike how an ordinary person might. Um, but she's still got a place to stay, right? You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. Yeah, he was already doing everything anyway, so he basically is the Archon. After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Okay. Like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power, and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the well, it doesn't seem like... machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? Archeum? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia. Yeah. And it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I yep. cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. About Fontaine's Gnosis. Oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the natives. Oh, we're and about to learn about not long. Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more, and I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! 
patience. Paimon thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to child. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know. Just more confirms that to that doesn't necessarily need rulers, but guardians maybe? Yeah. Good point. About the next stop on my journey, which is not long. You'll soon be heading to Natlan, I presume. Yes. I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. Oh. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? Okay, that kind of, uh, that makes sense, especially with Ursa the Drake from the manga. No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Natlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. Alright, so he is in Natlon. Sounds like a real tough customer. Seriously, everywhere you look, there's a Fatui Harbinger doing their thing. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Thanks, girl. Um, hang on a sec. Paimon still got a question about the Gnosis. Oh. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guess that Do you think we'll meet Varka and Natlan? I hope so. Hmm. I no think he'll be a character that will release in Natlan. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this That's my issue, opinion, by the way. Just or anyway. Share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. When something like what? I'm so excited for Natlon too. Well, Win or burn to ashes. Well, we're to see what's going on. You hurry over soon as well, all right, Nervalet? Dragons maybe become what became next? kobolds in Natlon. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. The all devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power, what it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons. But with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? What? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. What? Oh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so the Gnosis... They... <laughs> oh this changes well it doesn't change anything this this makes more sense to me actually <laughs> oh my god okay let's continue to listen to this well that much is true after Fosalor's divinity faded she handed her gnosis to me but I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young, and I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense, which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. 
To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. Hmm. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger then. Oh my god. <laughs> Is Foul Legacy based off Skirk's Master? That's what it sounds like since That's Skirk's Master is named the Foul. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. So They're the amazing. third the descender. Third descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paima just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui! If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. A Descender. She mentioned one of them. I am the fourth Descender. For me, this information means two things. One, that the Gnosis are related to Descenders. And two, that the one who came before me has already died. I guess that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Ruse, I love the whimsical flute during this. Yeah, it's like so. Comparing the traveler to the dead third descender and all. Wow. Don't worry, I won't die so easily. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck. <sighs> Once child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way. What if Lumine well, is the third descender and she's already actually dead? Interesting. The same is true of being at court. All right. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now. Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But she sacrificed herself in the end as a god. Oh, good point, Mal. That's why Miko said that the Traveler is, that is equal really to a Gnosis. Now, I don't know if she knows about Descenders, but that could have been a reference be from the writers will. to us. Can you understand the will of the gods? I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the Earth as raindrops. Life oh flows my like God. water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? You want to go find Farina after this? Wait, is there like an extra dialogue for her, or are you talking about the story quest? If you're talking about the story quest, we're going to do that later. It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Oh. You already well, told us enough. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before go- The story quest? We will do the story quest... We'll do it this weekend, actually. Alright? Yeah, we'll do it this weekend. We're not gonna do it today, though. Probably on Saturday. 
But oh, that was so good. That was so good, y'all. I'm just buzzing. My brain is buzzing with so many ideas. Ugh, I was not expecting that conversation about the third descender. But the fact that the Gnosis were created from somebody who is at the very least like the Travelers is so curious to me. I don't think the third... <sighs> Here's the thing about the third descender being like Lumine or Ether if you play as Lumine. Ether and Lumine are interchangeable. So it's like, I don't know if one would be the third descender. Because at the. It. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. If you ask me, the third descender might be the traveler from afar. Who knows? Whee! Remember the Genshin Impact beta opening? Something is piercing the twin. We didn't choose the body. Looks suspiciously, suspiciously like a celestial nail. Interesting. So wait, are they the dragon's power or this dead descender? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so because of... um. Yeah, so this obviously changes our understanding of the Gnosis, right? Because we thought they symbolized the dragon's authority, right? The stolen dragon's authority, but that's not the entire case. Like the Gnosis themselves were made from the remains of a dead person, a dead descender, which is so interesting. Wait, do my comments reach you or not? I wrote some things and I want your opinion about that. Wait, what do you want my opinion on? Wait, 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 wait. And the twin came to Tibet 500 years ago. The Gnosis exist for at least 2000 years. Yeah, the Gnosis are pretty old. So I don't know if, I don't think Ether or Lumine are the third descender, depending on who you play as, right? I'm thinking it's the traveler from afar. Or, I don't know, y'all. We'll have to talk about this later. <laughs> the thing is, we need to go to the abyss where knowledge always stays, unlike Ermin Soul. The Gnosis are made from the Descender and the House stole authorities. Wait, the House? Wait, what House? We should ask Nahida about this. Absolutely. Also, who the fuck is the foul? Who is he? Who is the foul? Who's the visionary? God. My comment was, is the Tsaritsa trying to assemble the body of the third descender? Which would be interesting because the Tsaritsa has a huge theme and about love. Doesn't she? Like, isn't that one of her? <laughs> theorized. Ideals. Can I read the newbie vision in his profile? Okay, let's go look. They acted more like conduits for the dragon's power. Yeah, so it's like the dragon powers are separate. The Gnosis themselves seem to be made from dead traveler. Whatever the fuck. Okay, wait, what am I reading? I'm okay, going to story. Oh, I don't have the vision thing open. I'm not friends enough with Nuvi yet. I'm sorry. All right, y'all. Well, that was fun. That was a lot. That was a lot of information. Holy shit. Um, we're going to reconvene on Saturday so we can talk about all of this. Right now, it is 4 a.m. and I need to go to bed. <laughs> I need to go to bed and so do a lot of you or you guys need to continue your work day or whatever the fuck you're doing. So. A word of advice. Don't break the law. 
thank you for right. joining. Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, seriously, don't break the law. Yeah, don't break the law. Whatever Risley said. But yeah, we're going to reconvene on Saturday. We're going to have a nice little chat about this. Thank you for joining the stream. I appreciate you all. Have a lovely night, day, whatever it is for you. And I will see you guys later. Bye. It was great.